Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, and folks, we have made it. It has been a long seven rounds of contention, um, but uh, by popular demand, we have cut this time not to top eight, but top 16, meaning there are still four more rounds to go. These are the best of the best players, and also Stevie's here. Uh, I would be remiss in uh, ushering in the top cut rounds of this tournament, however, uh, without first mentioning my co-commentator and the individual behind the scenes in pretty much every single round, I think it would be fair to say, um, working their magic, uh, Mambo Yu-Gi-Oh! How are you doing today? So, hey guys, welcome. We're about to do some top cut here. It's uh, a lot of interesting decks, uh, almost 15 unique ones, so it's ought to be really cool. All right, that is that is true. I would say that there are 16 unique ones because I do not consider a uh, depressionist deck a rocket link. I consider it an abomination. Um, the two that we're watching, however, are, uh, Rycape on Megalith, which, uh, we got to see, I think, round two. Uh, Megalith has been on an unbelievable tear, uh, in the LCS as well as, uh, in this tournament. Uh, as well as, uh, Buster Blader Rocket. I, what, what is that exactly, do you think? I have no idea. Buzzard Blader is actually a funny deck because sometimes they'll just do that weird trap, that Miracle Fusions from the graveyard to Synchro the Buster Dragon, and then you're just completely locked out of playing the game by the Buster Dragon and the Destruction Swordsman Fusion, and it's like, wait, you can do that? Yeah, people forget uh, Buster, the Buster, what's the name of the card? It's like Prologue of the Destruction Swordsman. It's extremely yeah. unfair. Like, that card specifically is unfair. So any deck that gets to splash it is uh, pretty in a pretty good position. That said, uh, we watched Rycape deal earlier today with some extra deck locking, and it turns out that Megalith actually doesn't care. Uh, they just make uh, Baythor over and over again. So I'm, I'm interested to see how this matchup in particular plays out. Yeah, the Megalith deck's really cool because I think so many people weren't they just, I feel like the theories behind it just weren't really well explored. And I know Rycape and the individual who did well at the LCS today Lundy, as yeah. well. Yeah, they worked together on it. So they obviously put a lot of time and a lot of effort into making this list as efficient as possible and finding the crazy text like the Magician of Black Chaos Max or whatever it's called. And for those of you who uh, watched my Megalith video and um, thought, oh, wow, that looks pretty similar to what Rycape's doing, uh, the list was provided to me by Rycape. So this entire thing is a Rycape extravaganza. Very talented player. Our defending champion, even. That is true. Uh, last time on a, a much fairer deck, but we'll, uh, we'll see how they do <laughs> when actually given the tools to succeed. And uh, we, we are in. Well, remind me, you, you man... It on oh, the Buster Blader deck, right? And starting off with one of the best Dragon Link cards in the Black Metal Dragon. Yeah, um, this is about as good as you can hope for. Uh, Black Metal Dragon represents, I think, two pieces of Link material? Yeah, generally speaking, most Dragon Link decks, you really can do any combo available to every deck in the world. All you gotta do is open two dragons and mm -hmm. hit, hit no interruption, and you can just do whatever you want. Uh, but this one being Buster Blader, I wonder exactly, I wonder exactly, well, I guess actually, yeah, because I know that the, I don't remember its name, but that Link 2 or yeah. Buster Blader, although it has generally been toted around as just, ah, yes, good Link 2 to go into to give me points for LP, I don't even remember what it does, but I assume that that We're about uh, to plays find into out. the combo strongly, yeah. No, it's called uh, Buster Whelp, the Destruction Swordsman, I think. Uh, yeah, this is it right here. Uh, it's uh, on summon. It adds a Dragon Ravine to your hand. Ooh, and also it takes a Gamma out of your opponent's hand. Uh, it is definitely a card that will eat every hand trap available. <laughs> uh, for what it's worth, Rycape is on an unbelievable amount of hand traps. Um, the list that he sent me was 60 cards and played zero hand traps. And I was like, oh, you're just trying to kill your opponent like you do in an Emancipator. Uh, apparently that's not the case. Um, not only does Megalith have access to every hand trap that every other deck does, uh, Eratron, their 8-star fusion that is not Baythor, allows you to ritual summon on your opponent's turn, which can translate into multiple pops, if you so desire. It's not fair. I'm glad you know stuff about this, because I have 
I haven't ever, I haven't read a single Megalith card unless I was forced to. That's literally why I read them is because Right Cape <laughs> won and forced me to. As he, as is his right. Now, I do know a little bit about the Dragon Link deck. I wonder, because I, I don't know specifically about the Buster Blader line, I wonder if the Romulus was actually intending to get the, my favorite part of the deck, the Dragoon ED Divine Lance in order to summon a Phalanx from deck, but it looks like they're on the very long-winded way to try and get to an actual play. I hate this. I, I hate this a lot. Uh, I don't like the fact that uh, Dragon Link has access to a Foolish Burial by way of a generic Link monster, and they choose a different card. Like, no, the Foolish isn't good enough. We want more. Hey, man, Linkross is really good in today's game. I don't know if you've heard of it. I Link Cross? Am I saying that right? Yeah. Look, at, hear me out. It sounds bad, right? You take any Link 2 or higher monster and okay. you link it off for this card. A Link 1, 900 attack. But all it does is it summons tokens equal to the Link rating of the monster you use. Well, that sounds incredible. You you Then you perform a Link summon with the tokens. Well, you can't. The, the tokens can't be used for a Link summon. Link Cross can. But oh. The tokens can't be used for a Link summon. No, it doesn't sound good to me. And people play in it for some reason. All right, uh, we're going for a an LP activation here, uh, and I, I guess it'd be Brotar. I have no idea what you search. Unfortunately, I'm just so unfamiliar with this particular deck. Normally, what you do is the Shrek or Dragon did resolve, so you would go for Brotar, have it target either itself or the LP here, and then add a Rocket Tracer, and then kind of go from there. Mm-hmm. I wonder if the seals, if they actually intend to link that down though into a link cross to give themselves some tokens. I don't know if they're on the Garden Rose Maiden, which is, I think, one of the most under-talked powerful cards in the game right now. Just one of the most degenerate at the very least. I remember when uh, Ib the World Chalice Justicar came out and people were using it for all manner of FTKs. Uh, and then when it was a banned like one format after being printed, uh, they said, oh, well... We'll just substitute Garden Rose Maiden in these combos. And it worked perfectly, and then no one played the card. Yeah, the Justiciar, though. I, I remember being upset with the Justiciar eggs. One of my favorite decks of all time is World Chalice, and that deck has received so many indirect hits on almost every single ban list since its inception. Can you actually... what What is the NJ Yu-Gi-Oh rating for Linkross? Oh, I can only imagine. Uh, it has to be a 1. Yeah. I, there's been some new ones coming out. I know the Numerons are not rated particularly high. Mm. Well, that makes sense. Uh, we only have one Numeron deck in top 16, so maybe they do suck. And the tier list, a lot of people ask me, like, what does the tier list look right now? It's pretty much, tier 1 is Ad Emancipator, good builds of Eldritch, and then you have tier 2 is, like, good builds of Dogma, bad builds of Eldritch, Dragon Link, Infernoble, <laughs> and then tier 3 is just bad builds of Dogma, and then, like, that's it. That's just the meta. <laughs> You're just describing like, so it, it would it would be better to conceive of instead of tiers of uh, decks, like tiers of how smart the people building them are. Like uh, <laughs> if you're if you're like super dumb and you're playing like Maximus main and losing to your opponent having Nova in the extra deck. You know it happens. I'm sure it has happened. It, it happened a lot. We, we saw a non-zero amount of Nova. <laughs> so are you just sculptured? Now, this is this is a just this is almost just the freeform combo at this point. They're, mm -hmm. I, I feel like at this point, their main line of play got ap just completely ruined by the Gamma, so they are just on some sort of a prayer here to hit something crazy. I love seeing the Saruya in uh, in rocket link because it's it's always a disaster it's like oh god oh i've really screwed this one up we've really bungled <laughs> it this time and then they like find a safer and go oh no it's fine it's actually completely i remember good. uh was it? it was that early days the 2019 savage strike format where it was uh danger thunder chaos guard dragon just that amalgamation of just insanely powerful cards mm -hmm. and i was calling for a saryuja banner limit and i still to this day will not rest no, to, I, I do realistically think Saruya could be limited with no problems. Uh, not necessarily because, like, the card is too strong and everyone's playing it at three. But every time it's playable at three, it's because there's something extremely not cool happening. Future-proofing everybody. Everybody's saying all these other cards are the problem, not Halka Firebrats. 
<laughs> Actually, funny story, as we, we're going to see a rocket tracer come down here on the World Legacy Guard Dragon, is I want to assume they're going to try to end on a Boral South, but quick story, uh, a viewer of mine asked me to make a deck, a 60-card 60 60 card deck, you only get to draw one card. Your opponent starts with zero cards in the hand, you just start with one card, and they said, what is the best deck I can make? I said, you make Dragon Link FTK, because all you got to do is play 41-card Halka Fibrax cards, and then they won the event. Oslo Piscu and Halk are no longer allowed. Fantastic news. <laughs> All right, I um, did. We are setting one card. I would hope that that's like Prologue or something, so we can actually see Buster Bladers and don't have to just look at Borolod Savage for the millionth time. We're going to activate Baythor here. Uh, like Eritron, it allows you to summon a ritual monster from hand. Unlike Eritron, it's not a quick effect. Uh, but the unformed chaining to the called by the grave, I'd imagine this is going to eat the savage dragon activation, but if it doesn't, uh, what on earth could they possibly have in the hand afterwards? Two cards here, so it's up, especially with the way the... Awesome. Yeah, the, <laughs> with the way the megalith mechanic works, having the ritual, pretty much, you do use a heavy amount of resources, and then, of course, you're relying mostly on, like, portal and block dragon to get them back, if I'm... Not horribly mistaken. CJ Alex has found it. Link Cross, a one star monster. If this card is Link Summoned, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> here's the comments. Wait a minute. That's it? Bringing out a Link 2 monster? Then using it as material for this gives me a very weak Link 1 monster that can only special summon tokens I can't use right away. There's no point then. A reminder that Christron Halka Fibrax in this particular format is also rated a one with the comments being a late addition to the Christron family and not a very good one at that. Fantastic. That's that's actually probably true in the context of Christron. It really is. I remember I played against Christron on Dueling Book once, and they did, I think it was uh, Citrus Effect, and it that's one of the ones that locks into the machine-type synchros, and I went, geez, this deck really can't even make Halk. It's like it just it's it's just not it, it it's just not equipped to use its most powerful card. All right, uh, chat, as always, we're going to put up a poll for who's winning this match, and we're seeing some early support for Megalith despite it losing the first game. Hey, good luck to you. I always get nervous when I see somebody shuffle their hand right away because that makes me think that they're just like, ah, man, I really hope this will make it look better. <laughs> All right, so Senju's a pretty powerful uh, normal summon. Um, more important than the activation of its effect and the ritual monster you're going to get to add is the fact that it's a four-star monster on board. Obviously, Chalice Slime is critical to a lot of the combos. Not necessary, but good to ensure they resolve in the best-case scenario. Most importantly, you're going to be able to end on a four-star monster. Perfect material for, say, a, uh, an Ophiel, a Hageth, etc. And then two fours, I hear, you can overlay for Gallant Granite, which gets you this really powerful card... Uh, Dragon Ruler of Blocked Boys. The card is pretty darn okay. Alright, this is a very weird hand. Uh, summoning Fool off of the Incantation Inception uh, probably means that something has gone very wrong in the context of the hand, or they didn't draw a 4-star, no big deal, because Incantation Inception is broken, you can use it to summon a Talismandra and then get any ritual monster to the hand. We'll learn a lot based on this ad. If it's Chaos Max, the hand's already Gucci. If it's not, then they need more searches. OPL, so it is interruptible. It's, it's really it's really cool to see the Megalith deck doing so well at several events now, mostly because Rituals, in general, have so many good cards. Oh, but yeah. But they're just carried by the fact that every single Ritual monster printed is so underwhelmingly bad. <laughs> so it's really nice to see a deck that can actually like do stuff with this insane just slew of Ritual support cards. And what I like about Megalith is that it, it just plays so excellently through interaction. Like, what would you stop here? Do you stop the Hageth? Do you stop the Ophiel? Do you stop the Fool? The Fool pivots into either one of them, and the other two aren't once per turn. It's just almost impossible to interact with. The only really critical choke point is right here when we go Granite into Block Dragon. And even if that's negated, you can always draw Block Dragon, or you can make a Baythor without it. Yeah, that's you see similar things in the other popular rock deck of Adam Emancipator, where yep. there really just are no good choke points. Where oh yeah, you're sure I'll negate this, but then you just get burned, uh, researcher, and there's like, well, <laughs> it's like, oh, I'll negate the Halka Fibrax. There's no possible way you could end on four negates if I do that. And it's like, well, yes, that was optimal. No, you are still going to lose. 
My absolute favorite is like, yes, I resolved Nibiru against Adam Anspader. Uh, reveal, uh, reveal researcher? Dang it. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so we're going into Hageth number two here. We're going to go into a cross sheep. That's going to put enough earths in graveyard to summon block dragon without banishing anything too important. Important to know, you can block dragon even with, with other stuff. Uh, we can unformed here to trigger the effect of block dragon and do it in a way that triggers not only the effect of block dragon, but also a Hageth from deck and the cross sheep on field. So it is all but impossible to negate with something like an Ash Blossom. Cross sheep, it's ritual effect. Well, I, I'd say the ritual effect is far from the worst one. Draw two, discard two. It does give you some fuel for things like block dragon, and it does cycle through the deck pretty well. There are some very bad effects on cross sheep. Synchro and Xyz in particular are just laughably bad compared to the other two. I mean, this is uh, Xyz Erasure. Wow. What if you're trying to OTK? Fool. With what? What are you going to do? Her Summon Heroic Champion Excalibur, reduced by 700, activate Heroic Chance, and then, like, that other card that doubles? No, so if you make a Ragna Zero under Cross Sheep, you can ah. draw a card. Insane. <laughs> so we're going for uh, Hageth into <laughs> Ophiel here. This is one of the least fair parts of the deck. If you don't have the requisite material for the Block Dragon in Graveyard, you can just chain through Ophiels. Uh, and, of course, no combo deck would be complete without Link Cross. I... Cannot believe they're playing Link Cross. We just talked about why that card is not recommended for play. Yeah, I look, you can't even use these tokens this turn. What is the point? Ad Emancipator Researcher coming down from the hand. My favorite part of the Ad Emancipators in this deck is they don't do anything. They're just free tuner summons. Like, they could be a vanilla monster that summons itself, and as long as it was a tuner, they would play it. But instead, they're playing a $90 card because nothing else does it. It is so funny that... It, when you first looked at the Adam Anspader is actually another perfect example of a deck where we saw it for so long. It was in the OCG for two, three months, and everybody really, it was really unassuming. And then it got over here in the TCG, and then like Cody Angloff, and then the entire world looked at this deck and went, wait a minute. And now, now look, and now it is just, I mean, look at it. I mean, I don't want to, you know, break an arm jerking off right cape or anything, but it really does take uh, individuals willing to look at a deck. Um, in a specific way uh, to really break it. Like, I, I would not be surprised if Megalith had gone its entire lifespan with no one discovering that it was an extremely powerful combo deck um, just because the group of people who are constantly trying to innovate FTKs never figured it out, right? Like, figuring mm -hmm. out that the optimal line for this weird interruption stun deck isn't to uh, sit on uh, Hageth activations and Fool for Bathor, and is to use Christron Halcafibrax to go in a hot red dragon Archfiend Calamity, that's not something that you can, like, intuit. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah, that's hours upon hours of dedication and reading and studying and uh, groupthink, because it's yeah. very, very uncommon that any one person in the game just goes, yes, I figured it out. Yeah, and I mean, that's why it's so important that there are uh, collections of people like uh, Rye Capes and Lundredes and Cody Angelos and, uh, it, you know, things like that. Uh, not great news. Uh, this Dragon Ravine is going to be negated, uh, and after it goes to the graveyard, we will activate the effect of Halka Fibrax. That's going to make a Formula Synchron. That's going to draw a card, but most importantly, will enable an Excel Synchron on the opponent's turn. And what do you know? This is a Dark Dragon Monster. So using the Formula Synchron alongside the Borload Savage Dragon, and ooh, probably also this copy of Cyframe Gear Gamma, we're going to be able to summon from our extra deck a copy of Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. If its effect is negated, we can always activate Fool to get the Magician of Black Chaos Max out of our hand and turn off monster effects as well. This is... I, it's so stupid. This is absolutely just one of the coolest things I've ever seen in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. This is so oh. sick. And I mean, like, negating this effect is impossible anyway, right? Like, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's just fantastic. Yeah, this is incredible. And look, they're going to set their entire hand. Then when they move from the main phase, uh, they'll just activate Fool. Fool will get Bathor. Bathor will pop the entire field. And that's the end of the game. Here it is. Yeah, this is... Like you said, the way that this deck has been theoried, and like you said, finding something like I never, I didn't even know this card existed. Hot Red Dragon, Archfiend, King Calamity. Oh yeah. And now they're sitting here. Beethor can pop up to I think it's any rituals in the graveyard with different names, or is it just rituals? It's period? rituals. Period. So if over the course of the turn you chained Ophiel's together, you just get to pop six cards. Wow. 
All right, so now it's time for game three. I mean, these are two decks that build nigh unbreakable boards. Granted, I think the Megalith boards are a little more impressive. Um, Rycape is playing a ton of hand traps, uh, so it's it's really going to come down to what interaction they draw and at what time they get to deploy it. It's another interesting theory, because I know, in particular, one of the other most popular decks coming into this event, actually the most popular event coming in, or deck coming into this event, was Infernoble Knights, and there's been a lot of back-and-forth theory about 60 or 40 cards, and like you said, you started with a 60-card list, and then Rycape, and I believe, uh, I already forgot his name from LCS, but they uh, also Lundry, were yeah. playing, yeah, they were playing uh, near-identical builds of closer to 40, so they really found a way to trim the fat, which is very hard to do, so that's incredible. I mean, even a week ago when Rycape handed me the 60-card the mm -hmm. list, uh, they were like, it's hard to cut cards from this. And in playing it, I was like, I have no idea what I'd take out. There's like maybe two cards that I would feel comfortable shaving. For um, sure. I, both of those individuals, by the way, have won Quarantine Series events. <laughs> yeah, I mean, good, good players. At that, I, what else can you say? Like, some people just are very good at the game. I hear. I, I wish I was. Um, I'm, I'm retired, so I don't even care. Yeah, no. We're, you're just a you're just a variety streamer now. You stream Yu-Gi-Oh mm -hmm. and NJ Yu-Gi-Oh. Absolutely. Yes. Yu-Gi-Oh and dumber Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, for what it's worth, um, I don't think Infer the science is settled on Infernoble Knight. Megalith is weird in that its combos were hard to achieve, but I would be hard pressed to think of anything more effective than what's being done with it now. Infernoble, I think, is still going to require, like, a lot of thought. I, myself, spent probably three hours <laughs> just plugging, trying to make sense of the numbers and the hypergeometric calculator on an Infernoble list, and I really couldn't... Like, you could easily make a 40-card list, and it has its pros and its cons, but for me, I, I the math was so good on 60-card lists, especially in... This meta, which I would say is pretty hostile, where you do you are pretty required to play a significant amount of hand traps. Hmm. All right, uh, so we're going for Starleash Seifert. How much longer until Starleash Seifert is the same is on the same level as normal summon jet synchron? I it's there, coming. There was a time when people were like, "This is the most broken card in Yu-Gi-Oh." Uh, it looks hey, like it looks wrong. like. Uh, Jeff Leonard is currently in game three versus Plunder Patrol. Can pl is Plunder going to take down mine? Really? Oh, come on, Jeff. Plunder puts every up single, zero negates. Every single time I've I've assisted in one of these events, Jeff will make top cut and then instantly lose in about ten minutes. Come on, Jeff. Let's go, Jeff. Can we get some let's go Jeffs in chat? All right, we are starting with a pretty standard combo here for the dragon link now they actually the quick launch for was this rocket synchro is actually quite interesting because that gives you the option to go into Hulk or romulus depending on what your hand calls for yeah uh, what i like about rocket link is that in a lot of ways it's a less competent combo deck than at emancipator but it's just so flexible like it it, it just gets to do whatever with any hand and i understand at emancipator is similar but Man, oh, oh, by the way, there's your favorite card, Dragoonity Divine Lance. It's so cool that this deck just plays Dragoonity Divine Lance, and it's like an integral part of all of its combos. It's so cool. Okay, so you get to equip a Dragoonity Tuner from your deck, and of course you get Phalanx, which special summons itself. It, see, it's more material! That's the way it works! More material is definitely the name of, well, pretty much every deck these days, and particularly <laughs> these rock decks, but... What's cool here is you do get to do your standard link cross stuff, and then you're going to uh, go for the Metal Marshal Marcher, kind of standard. You're going to get your Phalanx back off of the Marcher, and then you can go into Hulk Vibrax using the Marcher and the link cross, which can get Red Rose Dragon, go into Herald, and then that'll give you uh, the White Rose Dragon, and then that's your two dragons that then set up your Guard Dragon plays. Stupid. Wow, I really don't like Very. that. I Very. really don't like that. Wow. <laughs> All right, so out comes the Martial Metal Marcher, as we uh, had predicted. God, I, this card. Do you think there's a, a world in which it's not Link Cross that's banned, but it's this card? Yes, because TCG Konami wants to push modern... I actually... That was my hot prediction of this is the card they're going to hit because they don't want to hit re recent cards. So they're going to hit Metal Martial Marcher instead because it's such a weird 
kind of mid-step of the combo where it will force players to either not play it or do something weirder to make it work. I mean, for what it's worth, it, it does accomplish a similar thing, right? If they just mm -hmm. shave this guy. Yeah, that was my theory there. Now I want them to ban Garden Rose and Smoke Grenade at the Thief because I think that that is the most unfair card in the Infernoble deck. As though Wait. I say that, it's not showing a lot of results. Uh, can you explain that interaction to me? Which one? I've I've never seen this. Uh, Garden Rose and Inf and Smoke Grenade of the Thief. Oh, not uh, in the same deck, but oh. uh, just in general. <laughs> Yeah, there is a there is an interesting uh, there's a build that has come out recently. Depressionist is actually on it of a smoke grenade of the thief uh, dragon link deck where you use chaos dragon Leviathan and I think rocket tracer to loop grenade twice and then you end on like normal dragon link stuff. So you're borderload savage and then other stuff and then you end on perfect hand knowledge. Uh, can we figure out what's going on here? I am. Why is there an Armalevitin on board? I am so lost. Okay, so you can equip the Phalanx. It's more material. You get to summon Phalanx. Oh. Uh, we're, I, we're making Saruya. I, I guess the idea is like Prologue is so hard to find that you just gotta, you just gotta get digging, buddy. <laughs> Armalevitin off of LP is. Easily the most hyped thing we will see for the remainder of this top cut. I will say it now. Wow. Ar Arma Le Wow. Ah, wow. I I have nothing to say about that. And you know what is even better? Because as we're looking at a very heavy Dragoonity Dragon Link deck, can you not wait for all that extra Dragoonity support to come out? You yep. know, the one that says, uh, basically, what is that one card? Elemental Hero, Captain gold or whatever that yeah. searches out the dragon ravine and that special summons itself for free hey this is pretty cool by the way this um is... uh, arma leviathan is actually just pre errata or red eyes darkness is that what i'm seeing apparently that it is very good at what it's doing right now and that is recurring a level two tuner it's summoned to this twice like, we, we got it off the LP like you would for Red Eyes. We summoned a dragon from Graveyard like you would from Red Eyes. Then we got it back from Pisty, and then we got two material like you would from Red Eyes. This, I mean, it seems like pre errata Red Eyes. Uh, we, we've, been, we've been really, like you said, jacking off Rykape on the excellent deck building theory. I've never even heard of such a theory as this Dragoonity Dragon Link Buster Blader deck, and this is really cool. Speaking of, where's the Buster Blader crap? I, I want to see know. Prologue Resolve. I was I was wondering if maybe like this whole combo led to like ending on Raw Buster or Buster Dragon, which is like, the level seven synchro if I remember correctly, and then kind of uh, going from there. That that sounds terrible. Ah, uh, we have our first. Oh wait, uh, oh. result. Oh. Oh yeah, go ahead. Revs has won their match. Oh, fantastic news for all the Revs fans in the audiences. Welcome to episode, was it 42 now? Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> oh, they haven't used the Star Leech yet. Wait, Star Leech was in this game? <laughs> we just didn't yeah, activate that's it? How, that's, how, yeah, that's how they opened. They normal summon Star Leech, not use the effect. And it's been like 900 years since then. Mind the time. I, I know it's a 240 second timer, but they have been absolutely popping off. Yeah, I mean, we don't have the timer in front of us, but realistically, there can't be that much left. Yeah, they've got to be getting down to the last 60 seconds here and really got to end. We say that, now they're pausing to kind of figure out their line here. and That could sometimes be the problem with those Saryuja decks where you're just like, man, I hope I find it. Ooh. Yeah, Never they said they made a mistake. That. All right, well... Carrier fetches. Just the buster lock? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, Buster Lock seems pretty good here. You can do it off Metal Dragon, right? True, true. All right, I we're going for the Union Carrier. Nice. Gives you that continuous lock, plus you have two forms of interruption. Actually, now that I think about it, the Herald is really good against Megalith since anything discarded from hand. Yep, do they have to is... go to Graveyard for cost? Uh, yes. Ooh. Those I... Herald is insane right now. I, wait, I believe so. Chat predicting that the boot Ooh. sector would come over. Ah, 
That's pretty oh. strong. That's a good Oh, it's awful. Oh. oh god. Dark ruler plus evenly matched. I mean, what are you supposed to do about that? So hilariously, spheres does still work under Dark Ruler. It negates the effect on field, but in graveyard it will still trigger. We get to evenly matched here, which is Oh, and they kept the set card! One million percent prologue. A prologue is I, I what it was to do is foolish burials too, and then you can still use its effect to then summon the the other guy. I mean, there's no way you would keep, like... I guess with everything negated, there's no compulsion to keep anything on field. You could keep, like, a called two, maybe? Mm, call by the Grave did basically hard carry game one. All right, let's go. Let's see it. All right. Oh, some more results coming in. Stevie Blunder has lost to Gil, and Depressionist on that Smoke Grenade Dragon Link has won. Oh, what? what? Yep, double lost. It was, it was infinite. <laughs> Infip's actually kind of dope here. While, okay. well, it, mm, it depends. If you've got a level four monster to normal, it's quite bad because now that this is off, I think you can just link it away or uh, use it as material for earning Z's. But, uh, oh, Bathor, Bathor going for the main phase one spell speed one ritual summon, sending the chalice line for Ophiel. Does this do it? We go Ophiel into Fool or Hageth. No, it's got to be Fool. Yeah, we overlay for uh, for Gallant Granite, and that should be the end of the game. Oh, yeah, the Imper shuts off that continuous effect imposed by the the uh, incantations where you cannot access the extra deck. Actually, is that true? Is this an effect or a condition? I believe it's continuous effect, if I'm reading it correctly. Yeah. All right, so we're going for Fool into Hageth. Uh, then we're going to fire the Hageth, of course. Uh, Hageth gets unformed, and uh, now that we have unformed in hand, that's full combo. We can overlay any number of these idiots for uh, for Gallant Granite. Let's see if that's actually possible, and it is. Ah. Oh, there boy. we go. Yep. Well, it was a beautiful yeah. Buster Blader deck, everybody. Uh, there was a lot of busting. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I would say that I'm busting. <laughs> I, you know, when the armor Levitin, I, I was at least half. Yeah. We, when I saw the Le, the Levitin, I, I I was edging a little, but unfortunately we weren't able to uh, to reach this deck's climax. <laughs> yeah, I get to really see Megalith pop off here. It is, it's crazy how what it can do with actually just a few cards. Yeah, I mean... Uh, this this game, it had to play through one piece of interaction with a four-card hand because two of them were Dark Ruler No More and evenly matched. We're not getting a battle phase, which is annoying, but I, I mean, you are still dead to all the unbelievable things that you get to do here. Unformed, uh, hitting the block dragon here. We're going to get every nuts card out of the deck. Yeah, and this is... It's everything, because now you're going to get to go into your... Uh, your, um, what is that called? Uh, researcher, you get to access to that entire line of play. All, every extender in the book. Block Dragon is just, we talked a little bit about it, the future proofing of cards. Block Dragon is the perfect example of a card that was spent four years waiting for a deck to break it, and then it got, well, three, I guess if you want to count Gem Knight at its peak. Mm -hmm. With Jason Leonard special right there. I mean, it's always a whiff. This deck literally plays, I think, one potential card that you can summon off it. Uh, the 60 card played three Guardian, but that would be an easy shave. Zero targets. Thank you, really, Renegade. Oh really zero to win. <laughs> You're literally just playing it because it's an Earth monster. You can special summon why it and it's a tuner. Why, why do you fire it? <laughs> Wait, fibered four Researcher? Yeah, if, if it has zero targets. Just a meme, the perfect answer. Fine. <clears throat> but again, like, a lot of the problems with this deck, like, really, uh, people thought Megalith wasn't going to be powerful just because they thought Megalith wasn't going to be powerful. Like, you sit down and think about this deck for a minute, and it's like, oh, of course, this was always going to be busted. Like, none of the cards that search are once per turns. Unformed isn't a once per turn. Uh, it's uh, the same typing as Block Dragon, uh, you can cycle through your entire deck. 
Uh, it has the stat line for Gallant Granite. Uh, I mean, it's it's pretty much every possible thing under the sun that could be going wrong. Another good example of how you make the ritual mechanic good, just print a bunch of cards that completely just bypass and mock the actual like integrity of the ritual mechanic. Yeah, like, does this feel like a ritual deck to you all? Is, are, are, My... are you all like... um? Like, children that have just learned about object permanence. Are you all like, well, there's blue, so it's rituals. Like, there's a blue card, it's a ritual deck. Like, uh, this isn't ritual summoning to me. These could just be monster effects that summon. My absolute favorite card in this deck is the ritual spell that is a quick play spell. Yeah, really cool. Ritual summon from your deck on a quick play spell. <laughs> it's like, you, you know you have a super type for this. You could just say, you can activate this card from your hand like it were, like, fast... You don't have to... Actually, do they have templating for that? I don't know if they do. Uh, I It wouldn't stop them from making it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> we got the Draytrons that now tribute based on attack points and all sorts of manner of things. We're just, we're just throwing caution to the winds. We're like, rituals are never going to be good. We got to remake them. Absolutely. They, they said all ritual... Like we said, all ritual decks... There's just no good actual singular boss sponsor in rituals. Unicorn Pass is woefully outdated. So they just... A, a few brave fellers decided to just make this insane combo deck that will end on the world in war. You know, I've actually... I do like that the way to break... Uh like rituals period was just to make them a type that was already crazy supported like if we just made dragon rituals they'd be busted oh god can you imagine so they just print something that you that issues the ritual mechanic even more it's just yeah. like ignore its summoning conditions so you can just ritual summon out of the deck off of lp what if it was like this card can be ritual summoned or normal summoned <laughs> or like this card can be ritual summoned or special summoned by banishing one dragon from your graveyard oh it's also a dark or a light so it's just chaos yeah, it's well just no chaos. I guess it wouldn't work on chaos space but yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we could make it work All right, it's that easy I we're don't know just, why uh, they say designing cards is hard we're just, we're just doing calamity here. Summoning a uh, white dragon wyver burster in defense position yeah we've all been there buddy I don't think you're going to be there for very much longer <laughs> Interesting to note that the two two cards named Calamities are pretty much the same card yeah. in its own way, shape, or form. They're also ah. both Calamities for Yu-Gi-Oh! And then, of course, we can pop the entire mm -hmm. field. Why not? I mean, why not also print uh, this huge pop for the entire field? Yeah, a card that says pop up to... Let's take a look, actually. We have one. We have a Ben 10. Cool. Two. Uh, I don't oh, know. Getting ben 10's effect. I don't know what the Ben 10 is in here for. Every time that Rykape has activated it, they just get Manju. I'm like, that's not good. Maybe they have like a Lancia in the board. I don't know. So that is five pops. Oh, Lancia would be sick. Yeah. That's another funny thing is where the Draytrons are incredible because you can tribute Ben 10 and get Ben 10's effect, and then you realize the amount of actually good light fairies in the game is also very limited. Rykape says it's just a resource engine. Yeah, the deck with Block Dragon that triggers it on both players' turns, it really it needs more resources. That's always been my problem. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we saw at a point where they went from three cards in hand to, like, seven because of between Cross Sheep and Block. So. They, after doing uh, the Dark Ruler No More evenly matched, they had zero cards in hand after starting the combo, and they got to, like, 12. Also, you know, just set unformed, activated on my opponent's turn, send my block dragon to the graveyard, get OPL, search off OPL in a way that chain blocks my block dragon, or even don't bother chain blocking. What are they going to do under Calamity? Another interesting note of how deck building works, too. You can see how extremely streamlined this Megalith deck is to do that one particular play. Yeah. And with it being as powerful of a play as it is, as we now finally hit back to Ry Cave's turn, as they have just the entire world at their disposal yeah so you you could i mean for, from this position it's just styling right oh. uh you can get chalice oh, yeah. slime uh if we have a bay thorn hand we can pop the remainder of the cards the yugi man's gonna surrender and rykape on megalith is going to put a a pretty pretty big target on block dragon i'm, I'm not gonna lie this card is not i don't think it's long for this world Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier, and it is now time for Top 8 
of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine Series number 8. We've got a bunch of interesting decks still in contention. Uh, I'm talking about Jeff Leonard on mine. I'm talking about Depressionist on smoke grenade rocket i'm talking about uh your cheese on numeron generator revs cards on rocket i'm talking about rye cape on that deck <laughs> megalith and jason leonard on ad emancipator but i'm also talking about our feature for this round gil on mech knight versus tortov on water and of course i'd be remiss if i wasn't also talking about um my uh partner in commentating and uh also lover um jacob fellatio how are you doing today yeah, I mean, who's not talking about me? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, Mambo Yu-Gi-Oh, folks, if you're not familiar, is the uh, one of two good Yu-Gi-Oh streamers. Uh, you should definitely follow them at twitch.tv slash Mambo Yu-Gi-Oh, I think. Uh, and, yeah. of, of course, um, if you... I, I, like, I don't want to say anything, but, you know, um, I, I, I don't call him Mambo. I call him Jacob because we're cool like that. Uh, you know, Jacob is Mambo, for those of you who don't know. Like, I do know mid-tier Yugi streamers. Uh, so... I just want to interject. I think it's crazy you kids talking shit about Joseph Rothschild, also known as MBT. He's Jack. You wouldn't say this shit to him on land. He hangs out at the hottest restaurants, hangs out at the hottest dudes. Y'all are pathetic. Yep. <laughs> for real. Uh, anyway, uh, we're gonna watch Mech Knight vs. Water, so, uh, who's, who's really pathetic there? Uh, Mech Knight is a deck that I, I never think is very good, uh, but when it plays in the Quarantine series, uh, it is imbued with a special power that enables it to actually beat people. Uh, Water is a deck that I can't believe is not strong, but Tortov is good at it, and I mean, all it does is just hand loop. It's, it's insane. I just want to say... Uh, while we're on the subject of water, please don't vote for Mermail in this yeah, trade card. Yeah, come on! You're, you're about to see, potentially see, one of the lamest interactions... Okay, like, no offense to Tortov, they're a very good player, but the yeah. deck itself, the lamest interactions of all time of search a card that says, I'm not getting hand trap, and then they just loop you for two more. Yeah, really cool, awesome, fun. It, like, water really only does the one thing. It, it has combo setups... Uh, and, uh, it has a significant amount of, uh, you know, ways to make things like VFD, but, uh, far and away, the most consistent thing it does is it just takes cards out of your hand, and then it says, ooh, where are all the cards in your hand, you idiot? Should have kept them in your hand. It's crazy. I, I never would have imagined, just because based on recent card design and bandless, I never would have imagined they would print cards that allow hand control, mm -hmm. like the Minstrel, like smoke grenade well i mean smoke grenade people is from like 2003 but i never would have imagined they would print cards like that and then they print that one card whose name they butchered was it triple tactics talents now uh yeah triple hurts to say yeah it does it's triple tactical talents rolls off the tongue triple tactics talents what the hell are you talking about no not good <laughs> yeah. uh oh, yes I, I do want to mention in the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine Series 8 uh, create a card poll, currently we have our first two of the final four, Dynomist and Sylvan. Uh, I, and I expect those two will go just about that far in the real event, too. Uh, next, we're going to decide between Fire King and Hazy Flame, two fan favorites. Yeah, two birds of a feather there, if you really will. Yeah. Back in I, me being around for as long as I have been, I remember when Hazy Flame and Fire... Because they came out around the same time when Konami really was pushing Fire attributes. Yep. Uh, chat is saying that there's going to be a very interesting combo, so I have to keep my eyes peeled here. Uh, oh, God. Well, uh, I <laughs> guess I guess we'll take Vader, then. Uh, oh, we could take Fant, too. Ooh, both of these are pretty uh, good gets. Yeah, I feel like Phantasme is that more... Baylor, you know what it's doing, but Phantasme has that wild card factor to it. Yeah. So, um, for those of you who are unfamiliar, we're going, uh, Neptibis, uh, we're gonna do the goon stuff to get Deep Sea Minstrel with Deep Sea Aria, uh, and then we are going to rip a card out of our opponent's hand. Love that this deck that just hand loops, uh, can now search more hand looping and execute them before they run into something like Nibiru. Super cool. Uh, we're gonna go for Halka Fibrax here, that's probably gonna get the, uh, Phantasme out of the opponent's hand. Phantasme is cool, but also turns off a lot of really good stuff, like, uh, in Fip. Impermanence for sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Because Mermail doesn't really have any effects that target, so that targeting protection is not really going to come up. Unless I, because, you know, Blue and Glacier does not target the hand. Yeah. 
target opponent, maybe. Yeah. I like how somebody did somebody in chat say there was a cool combo because man, I sure cannot wait for it to be hand loop to end on like BFB, which we all know is what the deck wants to do. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. I, I like, can't wait. I was like, you know, I love the Mermail combo, but it, it really feels like it's missing one extremely abusable piece of blue cardboard. And it looks like it has found a way to flex Link Cross as part of its combos. So get excited, everyone. Let's see what this does. Barricade Borg Blocker. Oh, Takaikun says it's VFD Savage plus Loop for five? Bro. Cool. <laughs> that that's so unbelievably cringe. Oh no! Absolutely. I still ban that guy. Mods? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Excuse me, mods. So we're we're right. locked out oh. of link summoning for the remainder of the turn. That's that's fine. Shoot. Um, because we we alluded to it in our last game about uh, the future proofing and how power creep works inside future proofing with specifically the card crystal on Halka Fibrax. And people always saying, yeah, I mean, Hulk wasn't really a problem card until all of this good support got printed around it. And then they somehow don't realize that that's the problem. Yeah. No, uh, I'm pretty sure that Hulk of Ibrax is fine. It's part of an archetype that sees next to no play. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that that's just that. I just, you know, it is great to see Mecha Fan of Beast and Christron really dominate the meta. All right. So we're going to go from, uh... mm. wait, what? Metal Marcher can summon Deep Sea Minstrel? I didn't even know it was a tuner. That's hilarious. That's very funny. Okay. Alright, so we're going to Crock a Dragon for what? Two here? That's that's not so bad. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. We have one, two, three, four waters. So much I didn't know about Minstrel. I didn't know it was level three. I didn't know it was a tuner. Yeah, pretty much the only time I ever see this card do anything it is picking a Nibiru out of my hand. And then I have to sit there for five minutes picking my nose while they combo into what everyone thinks is the coolest combo in the game. Oh, cool. So, five cards and on BFP. So this doesn't target. Awesome. So we can banish the Phantasme as well as a card from hand. Looks like we got the uh, the World Legacy key. That's like the worst one. Okay, yep. Glacia. Okay, so we have, we have now successfully made VFD plus looped for five. Yo, that is really, really fun. That's really right. great. Oh, I'm so happy! <laughs> All right, chat. Vote on your phones now. Is this Poggers or is this Dan's game or is this Resident Sleeper? Oh, you know what? Actually, I can start a poll as the streamer. Oh, let's go. All right, new poll. Uh, chat. Just, just cringe. There you What'll go. What'll it be? And we'll do a uh, Keck or cringe. And if uh, if you all pick cringe, uh, then we will automatically award Gil a win. Uh, for one game, they, they still have to do another one. Yes. And they will also be forced to side out Balloon Glacier. Seeing a lot of cringe, that's really shocking to me. Oh, now, hold on. Remember, chat, you can donate bits in order to vote multiple times, just like in real life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, the electoral process is such a mystical thing. Yeah. I, it... Ooh. <laughs> Mr. Destructoid on my way to vote. Oh, we have okay, a result chat. for top this four. Getting, this is getting interesting. Jeff Leonard has won once again. Now, if Jeff Leonard wins his side of the bracket and Jason wins their side of the bracket, we have successfully built the perfect timeline, and it will be a Leonard Grand Finals. Wait, Jeff is in top four? Mm-hmm. Dude, you're killing me. No way. Let's oh, go, Jeff. wow. Look at some let's go, Jeffs. That's definitely not cringe. That's not cringe. That's that's They're actually massive making a play here. Wait a minute. <laughs> so <laughs> we're we're going from uh, purple and a, an effect failure into a morning star with no material uh, and no way to get the Molen Glossia off the field. So I I would imagine that any summoned monster to the correct zone will just kill it. Uh, Abyss Megalo is a fantastic one. Uh, mm. uh, Discarding very good cards. Uh, oh, cool! A heavy infantry, so uh, you can destroy the. Uh, the Morning Star, if you so desire. Uh, World Legacy Memory, the activated effect here, uh, probably not going to matter. I'd even point, consider act... firing the True King. Yeah, I was about to say, he's called Light. It's over from there. Though for what it's worth, yeah, you call Light, you the entire board is just out. If they go for Indigo, which 
Sure. I mean, it's not really advancing a game state at all. You know, well, getting purple to try and play for next turn, I suppose. I think the idea is, like, they can move the, uh, the Morningstar around to avoid battle. But uh, <laughs> with the heavy infantry in the graveyard, the, the game is actually just over. Yeah, absolutely. Cute play, but game two will be the response. All right, chat. Uh, you were pretty specific about it being Kecker Cringe, but time for a more important poll. Um, who's going to win this game? Now, before you vote, I think it is it is worth mentioning that as a Mech Knight player, you do want to go second, so you're really subjecting yourself to potentially having to look at this extremely cool combo involving Halka Fibrax, uh, a little-known card. Yeah. Uh, for what it's worth, um, Gil's deck is a lot closer to the one that Brycape used to win the last Quarantine series. It's got a lot of uh, World Legacy lore stuff in it. And, of course, Lil Gearsu made going first as a Mech Knight player way better than it's been in previous formats. You know, that said, uh, you're not going to be able to pop off as explosively, and unfortunately, water is pretty much just as good at taking apart boards as it is taking apart cards in hand. Yeah, because Rycape, I, t I talked to him after that win, and he designates, he designates the deck as a control deck more than what I would call a sort of a tempo deck where you just aim to get up in resources and these are some interesting texts draw power all right so we're going to start with the uh, pot of desires desires is a plus 11 says gil i agree i wonder how many they play do you think they play two to see it sometimes but not always i guess i could check but i won't all right we're going to normal summon a copy of effect veiler that can turn into an al mirage if we have another spell in hand that's a column yeah, it looks like that's what we're doing Assuming maybe you open Secrets and then one of the more disposable Mech Knights here. Oh, oh well. God, what the Are they heck? on a Hulk combo? I, if they are, that, that would work out here pretty well for them. Technically, you could make Liv. You have a world... No, okay, which part of Liv is it? You need a World Legacy card to make it, but you need a monster to resolve the card you set. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah that's what it is. So we can get the card, we just can't resolve it. Mm-hmm. So we'll probably see secret or maybe a secret. Hmm. Uh, we also have a ah. zone here. Yeah, we'll see. This is probably where they want to try to go into that morning switch. Very underrated boss, so they already have the memory. Very good. All right, we're going to use memory to get purple, and then we can fire off the purple if we so desire. Targeting itself, of course, does not banish for cost. Very susceptible to Ghost Ogre in Numeron format. Yeah, it is good. interesting the how the hand traps have evolved in this format to counters because Numeron is really over centralized deck building. I feel so you kind of playing a deck like Mech Knight where the normal hand traps, so to speak, Ash and so on, don't hurt it too bad. But man, does it just get blown out by Ogre and Gamma? It's kind of weird because um, while it is certainly the case that uh, Numeron has over centralized deck building. It hasn't really shown up in the capacity that I think people thought it would. Like, the existence of Ogre is just so devastating to the deck. So really, all, all it's accomplished, I think, so far is, uh, beside the, you know, tops that are attributable to it, uh, is getting people to play Ogre over, like, a different hand trap lineup. Yeah, I think a lot of people actually probably welcome the addition of Cypher and Gear Gamma in their deck as well, because that is... Gamma's a good card. Much. It is undisputed, probably the single best hand trap in terms of its actual strength. All right, so we're going for Deep Sea Minstrel here. Sending a heavy infantry. Boy, that is that is so annoying. Oh, my God. I will say the Mermails, at least the Atlanteans, do have a fairly cool mechanic where they are some of the only cards where they get their effects when being discarded for cost. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately... You kind of forget it. well first of all i think it's the atlantean kind of timeline and how this deck became good is kind of whack because it was a structure deck i think people forget was the atlantean structure deck which was completely irrelevant and then they said well look at all the tools we're going to give it and then they released fire king as sort of the like antithesis to it and then they released like fire king island and then mermel got up to this and it was like ah i see well then uh, World Legacy Secret going to be chained to this Deep Sea Diva, going to bring back the um, the red at the same column to negate its effect, and uh, you need an extender, buddy. 
this is one of those th- Mech Knight when it does what it wants to do it is so cool building Fox Soul that's so interesting that's annoying um notably they negated the effect of minstrel over the effect of heavy infantry with the called by the grave um which cost them the morning star so it means whatever's in their hand they valued it higher than morning star uh which means in my opinion it's likely to be something like a valor which we would see here oh wow that's super strong oh my goodness yeah this will get i will go for purple which is probably the smart player now you can kind of get you Assuming that you probably are right, there is some sort of good hand trap in hand, whether it be Baylor, maybe a ogre, something like that. I mean, and then they cycle the resource to appear with double purple nightfall, which means they're getting to one search on their turn, one search on the opponent's turn. And what's cool about the Mech Knight deck in these, uh, this Mermel's a bad example, but these more extra deck reliant decks. Putting that monster in that column where the EMZ is means they will pretty much never get off effects unless they can switch it, which is just a cool <laughs> thing to stick in. Speaking of cool things, add gear suit to hand. Yeah. Uh, so what what telegraphs of that card in hand was super important is that they got the purple nightfall there over the indigo eclipse. So they forewent one additional effect monster negation to have a purple, uh, which means that whatever is going on in hand is a way to prevent them from dying and artificially elongate the game and if that's the case you know you want to be getting the resource that replenishes itself every turn i mean this is this is it we're probably going to go to a game three the world is your oyster at this point there is a lot of cool cards oh. that the mech knight deck play interesting the world armor okay there's sort of a debate in the mech knight i think right cape would tell you that the world legacy world chalice is preferable but the world armor is quite cool since you can kind of do a combo where if you special summon it off of a world legacy succession you set with live you can then search for a secrets or right. a memory the but... same the same theory is like how you would play it in generator uh to search a world legacy awakens true and the world legacy lore is so cool <laughs> this is a fun battle phase but I mean, it isn't lethal. This is what I would call fine. I mean, it's uh, you're not killing them, but at the same time, you now have four zones locked off from effects. Uh, assuming you can find a way to get an indigo with the plunder guard, and that is activated uh, effects. So the secrets is going to negate that. Yeah, that th- did that lose the game? No, they have a thousand more life points because of upstart. But uh. Th- that that di- that did not work as intended <laughs> <laughs> to say the least all right still have a nice follow-up here you can go into morning you can get a search for indigo go into morning star discard the indigo get a secret yada, oh. yada, yada. no this uh this is lethal yeah it's still ah. it's still 100 over all right well uh fun interesting game and uh we'll be proceeding to game three chat you still think that water's going to take it after that all important game three and this is this is the true test here because i assume you're citing in everything in the world to not lose cards in your hand to mermail right now and it does have some very notable choke points uh and i i really think that yeah i the choke points differ from hand to hand which is frustrating about this deck but uh yeah, I mean, if you're Tortov, you're very happy to be going first uh, and having the opportunity to summon the extremely unfair cards in the Mermail lineup. Uh, if you're Mech Knight, you're pretty happy to be going second in a known, like, Game 3 scenario where you can be very targeted with your board options. But, you know, you still could lose because they just opened Deep Sea Diva and you only opened one hand trap. Yeah. Ah, hey. Commentator's Curse? Oh, I meant to say Minstrel. If I had said Minstrel, would they have opened it? <laughs> Probably, yeah. If you had you said, well, sometimes you just open hands of, like, Diva, uh, Deep Sea Aria, Neptibis. Actually, Neptibis is arguably probably a better normal summon. God, I hate Neptibis. What an unbelievably unfair card. Uh, it, it gets away with it because it's not, like, meta, but... Ooh, sending for cost and then getting the effect of goons to get goons to trigger goons. Boy, boy, I mean really just a, an interaction designed to hurt me personally. 
I like how you said that I, you, I don't know if you said it directly, but you said that the card is fine because it's not meta. No. <laughs> this is a, oh no, Minstrel did yep, the yep, best. Yup, 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 yup. One hand trap Aww. plus Minstrel in hand. Uh. <laughs> <Aww>. Boo. <laughs> not to be biased, but boo. <laughs> Absolutely correct by Jeb here. Why does Gil, the Mech Knight player, not simply open the outs? I will say, it's risky playing a Mech Knight deck to say, I want to go first, and they actually sort of stumbled into winning that through being able to, like, <laughs> Valor into All Mirage, into World Succession, yeah, into Lib to set a card to give them a column. Very high, like, skill cap play there, <laughs> but, man... If this doesn't sum up the format right here, I mean, obviously these aren't like the two just dominant decks, but very unfortunate. I, I would say Halkin to Link Cross after ripping the Nibiru out of the hand is exactly uh, the the perfect representation of this format. Uh, big fan of a. Uh... <laughs> oh, but don't worry, this combo is really cool. Just ask Chat. All right, Chat. Yeah, how... One guy. Chat, is this combo keck or cringe? I'm putting it back up. <laughs> I, I wasn't satisfied with the results last time. Work. You know what? Florida was close. We're having a recount. Uh, what, what does the Supreme Court have to say about this? Mm, mm -hmm. Oh, wait. What is, oh, yeah. Attack gainer. <laughs> what is this played for? To gain attack. I know there's a reason, but I cannot remember why. Yeah, you want to you wanna gain attack. Yes. Yeah, NJYGO probably has this rated quite highly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got Aurora Dawn. I, what frustrates me the most about this deck is that it does so little Link Summoning. That is just maddening. I'm like, you couldn't li at least have the decency to, like, use the new broken summoning mechanic. You're really just going to summon a bunch of Synchros and then overlay for VFD? Oh, is that man. your main complaint? <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> use enough Link Summoning. It's so lame. This is like the, I could excuse racism, but I draw the line <laughs> at Link Summoning. <laughs> You do have a point, though. It is two Link Summons, and it goes... No, three, sorry. It goes into pro the three most... Oh. You know how Lynx has, though, uh, they have a rating where it'll show you the most used cards in the game? Yeah. There you go. Halk, Aurora Dawn, Link Cross are prop... They, I, if they're not the top three, they're damn close. They're uh, top five, bar none. Chad is telling us the combo that we didn't get to see because he hasn't gone into it this game. They use Neptibus plus Diva to Synchro Summon Goyo Defender. And then you summon two more to get a sold and just win from there. That is, that's so scuffed. Oh my that god. That is kind of cool, but chat, I'm going to say this as nicely as possible. I don't care. <laughs> the The worst part about banishing uh, the Nibiru with the uh, Deep Sea Minstrel is that other hand traps like Infip, for example, that will have utility on your turn. I mean, Nibiru's just dead from this point on. That's the that's the end of the game for Nibiru. And uh, it is also the end of the game for Gil, who is just... Oh, man, I am so sorry, my guy. Minstrel also has one of those cool things where it literally is unhittable by hand. I think, it's, I think with the exception of Gamma, you just can't stop it. Because it discards for cuts to the graveyard. Well, maybe Ghost... Not even, not even to the graveyard. No, it just discards for cost. Oh, because it vanishes, maybe? God. Skullmeister, uh, yes, yeah. Skullmeister will stop it. Thank you. Yes, of course. Everybody, we figured it, we solved it. Yeah, buy out you Skullmeister. Those Skullmeisters for the next quarantine series. Lancia. I oh, love that you mm. could just Aria. Great. Aria is such a weird card because it's supposed to be a starter, but it can't be a starter because you have to have a water in the graveyard. So it just ends up being like, this is my third action. I will use it to get a card out of your hand. And that's good enough. I like it's it's funny because people would clamor for like sea serpent support. They clamored for it for so long, and now look where we are. Yeah, I feel I, like we shouldn't just be complaining this much, but man, like because the, honestly, the combos this deck does are actually quite cool. Chat, it's but it's one it of those, does win in the most unfair way possible. It's one of those things where like talking about Mermail in the abstract is so much fun because it's like yeah, this is like a very interesting, innovative combo deck. But like sitting down and actually playing the game, it's like oh my, well yeah, okay, you have invented the combo that prevents me from playing. I but sitting down is physically excruciating. 
Yeah, there's 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 just that pit in your stomach when your opponent goes normal Neptibus, and you go, ah oh, man. You go Valor, and they go, <laughs> that's fine. Oh, oh, sorry, I haven't paid my cost yet. <laughs> you remember you you remember those days when it was oh, yeah. uh, what was it? Uh, uh, Dante, you would be Dante effect, and then they'd go to Mills like, no, I'm gonna Valor that, and they'd be like, yeah, okay, a uh, graph. <laughs> yeah, uh, nice. Oh, cool. <laughs> Nice Valor. Uh, I guess I won't be attacking with the Dante. You got it. <laughs> and uh, there's a surrender uh, out of Gale. Yeah. Tortov makes it to top four, ladies and gentlemen. What a what a poggers game. My cat doesn't like doesn't really like Marmel either. Hello, everybody. Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, and we are just moments away from the last round of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine Series number eight. First, however, we need to get into the top four. Uh, we've got two really good individuals here in this top cut. Two staples of online Yu-Gi-Oh! content. I'm talking about the man, the myth, the legend. He has outlasted his son. It's Jeff Leonard playing Mystic Mine against a fellow content creator, Revs Cards, who is just destroying the competition with straight-up Rocket Link. Uh, no frills, uh, nothing unnecessary, and has just been taking names all day. Um, but additionally, I am joined uh, in the MBT Yugi Tubing Studio uh, by an individual who has been putting in a ton of work behind the scenes. I'm talking about uh, the one, the only, uh, Mambo YGO. How are you doing here today? Uh, pretty good. I myself am a Yu-Gi-Oh! content creator that is mm -hmm. not anywhere near as attractive as Revs. That, it, that well, is how I categorize myself. I, I've always thought that people watched your streams, uh, like the same way they watch, like, uh, like Twitch girls, you know? Honestly, the way I describe my, kind of my whole personality is I'm sort of like a court jester. Yeah. But I just have my dick out all the time. Okay, so that <laughs> is not making it into the VOD. Uh, anyway, uh, today My today bad. we're looking at, um, at Jeff and uh, and Revs, and um, we are ready to go when they are. We're going to let them know that it is time to look at some cool interactive Yu-Gi-Oh. We've avoided him all day, but folks, we are now going to have to watch Jeff Leonard resolve Mystic Mine. And we, honestly, these two guys, you couldn't ask for, in terms of just them as people to just more homies just nicer people oh yeah i mean they're both this is great absolutely fantastic uh jeff is the only person who really should be allowed to come within 10 feet of any copy of mystic mine and speaking of there it is uh spell mining cave on edo pro alpha cretin Ware, um followed by mm. a silent wabi i mean that, that that'll do it it does not get better than that Oh, no, it does. In fact, we've also drawn Goddess Skulls ah. Oracle, so, you know, um, fantastic. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope you all have enjoyed uh, the 8th Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series. Uh, that's going to about wrap it up for us. Where did we end up on the cheese tier list? What do uh, we think, Chad? Yeah, My favorite take was fuck all cheeses, because that's it's just so interesting. It, it, like, you can tell that something happened to that person, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. My I mean, if you're lactose cheese. intolerant, then yes, my mistake. I was very insensitive then. I mean, I, I think that my favorite cheese would have to be Chucky. God rest his soul. <laughs> it's It sucks so bad that I just want him back. I feel like shit. All right, so a uh, fun fact about uh, Mystic Mine is that I'm, uh, uh, the... Is there one? I don't know. I'm going to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Wiki trivia page right now. Now, there is a cool thing. I, I will commend Jeff for him and Jason's discovery of Silent Wobby. That is just such a very interesting card be, but as because someone, of the continuous effect where you can only have three cards in hand. As, a, as someone who has Pottery. a little more knowledge of a Jason lore and Jeff lore, rather, um, originally they were playing DD Guide uh, mm -hmm. to do the same thing, but stopped because... Even though it doesn't look like it is, DD Guide's effect is activated. It just existed before problem-solving card text. So you could infip it, and, J and Jeff would just lose. <laughs> so they started playing Silent Wobby. I've won a lot of games doing that. Uh, Rev says, zero outs, by the way, and Ooh. we are moving to game two. Folks, it doesn't get better than... <laughs> 
Oh God. Let's go, Jeff. Let's go, Jeff. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's open up a poll real quick. Um, very happy to announce that the top four of the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine Series uh, custom archetype poll is Dynamist, Sylvan, Hazy Flame, and TG. That's the only time those are going to be said. Uh, let's type in uh, who's winning this match. And we're going to put in Mystic Mine. We're going to put in uh, Dragon Link. And uh, you're all going to vote for the right answer. I mean, I think it's pretty clear to me. We talked a little bit. Well, you mentioned it, uh, Jeff and Jason Lord there. Somebody in the spectators asking, couldn't you win by deck out? Dot, 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 question mark. Oh. I don't. I, there there are a lot of good cards in the mind deck. Yeah, the mind, the mind deck. Be there. The mind deck shockingly actually does have interesting cards in it. Uh, one mm -hmm. of them is Final Countdown. Um, and uh, yeah. I guess realistically it's possible Jeff draws Final Countdown in the bottom 10 cards of his deck. Uh, but I don't think that that's going to happen. Yeah, there's also Cauldron of the Old Man to oh, God. accelerate the win condition as well. Um, I remember uh, Jeff was playing someone who's undefeated at Pro Play Tour. It was a Floridian Pro Play Tour. It must have been mm -hmm. like Orlando. And uh, uh, after passing back and forth for 15 turns, uh, Jeff Windmill slams a final countdown. His opponent goes, did you draw that for turn? And Jeff goes, Yeah. And the guy goes, fuck you, and throws his cards on the table. We had to DQ him from the event. Uh, and uh, at the time, I was like, it makes sense. You know, he drew a card he's only playing one of, you know, blah, 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 blah. Later, I remembered, oh, yeah, Final Countdown is limited. Of course he was mm -hmm. only playing one. You can only play one. <laughs> Drawing it for turn is the only way to get it. A fun story. There was a time, th this is showing my age of the game, but there was a time... Chaos Dragons, Dino Rabbit, and Zector's windups were just going wild. Final Countdown emerged as an anti meta deck and was strongly considered tier one. Awful. Miserable. It really was. bad. I, I was cleaning up locals for like two weeks in a row. Third week, I get to the final round undefeated. My opponent sits down and I go, So we're playing the mirror? He goes, Yep. All right. Roll the die. He wins the die roll. I go, That sucks. He's like, it sure does. Duality? Yeah. Reveal final countdown? Yep, that's game. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Oh my god. Well, yeah, it, yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't stay on the field. It's just counting. Pirate and then game block. two, if I remember right, was upstart? Yep. Upstart? Yep. Duality? Reveal countdown? Yep. Game three? It was done in two minutes. We, I don't think we even cited. There was nothing to sign. <laughs> of course. It was 2011. Oh my god. No, uh, final countdown is one of those cards that like... um. Uh, there are definitely decks that are rogue playable, but their win condition, like Mystic Mine, is just so absolutely unfun that no one ever plays them. Like, I think you could make an argument that Mystic Mine could be a tiered deck. Here's Jeff, top four of the first Rise of the Duelist uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine series, just taking names with it, potentially about to walk into finals with this deck. Uh, but there's not a dedicated mine community because, I mean, what kind of person would do this to themselves? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, a funny thing, I, for a short-lived period of time until, you know, real life happened and schedules and all that got changed, mm -hmm. me and, or Peeps YGL and I ran a little podcast and we had Jeff Leonard on and it was just an absolute delight and it, it's just in his blood. He, we, we asked him all these questions because he's been playing, the, the cool story about uh, Jason and him is they've literally been playing the game together since, like, Legend of Blue Eyes. Yeah. Going so through good. every single format and listening to Jeff say, my least favorite formats were definitely uh, Zodiac, and then like just naming off all of the powerful combo decks. He's like, I really don't like this format either because of that Emancipator and yeah. Eldritch. It's just a tough matchup, and he's it's just I I don't know. He, he also just has such an incredible amount of game knowledge. He actually makes flashcards, believe it or not, for every deck and studies them. Uh, it's a lot of people, I think early on, especially when they saw Jeff's success expected, it was because like, oh, Jeff is like an older person playing this deck because it allows him to discount a majority of the meta. Jeff's actually like a really good player. He's playing the mm -hmm. deck because he likes the deck. <laughs> like that, that's the reason. He, he just likes cards that say no. Yeah. And like he, he, he says to me, Mystic Mine as a card, I read that and went, that is that is perfect for me. That is literally <laughs> the card that Konami made for me as a human being. And I went, there you go. <laughs> uh, for those of you wondering why we're not commentating, we've 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 seen this combo several times today. Um, Revs is just executing uh, some kind of Dragon Link setup. Um, 
we're on the Dragon Ravine portion of the game. Uh, unfortunately, the Saruya ate an infip, which is actually pretty bad, not only because it means that revs can't fix their hand. Uh, one thing that Dragon Link is really good is adding a bunch of conditional garnets to hand that you can shuffle away with Saruya if you draw them too early or if you need extra card draw. Um, but also, it doesn't get the special summon, which comes up a lot, because there's a lot of really good just, like, cards to sit on the field in this deck. Uh, I mean, I want to say game knowledge, but... <laughs> Who knows where you should be stopping a rocket in each individual uh, setup? I think it was a good choice. Saruja is such a powerful extender, and is in this particular build of Dragon Link where you're playing the Crusades, like you said, with conditional garnets. It's it is a key combo piece. Now yeah. on the bright side here, they're going to get four counters on this Warlord Savage Dragon, and I assume <laughs> pass. But uh, that is a hefty amount of counters. So this like isn't hard to beat. You just have to bait out one negate, and Jeff is trying to bait out between 6 and 12 negates every game. <laughs> the, I mean, generally speaking, mine can kind of trip you up where you think, oh, of course I just save it for the mine cards, and then you'll end up losing to, like, some obscure card like Planet Pathfinder, and yeah. like, oh, man. Those, the two face downs are interesting as well. I wonder what room they may have made in the side deck for some outs most likely cosmic cyclones i was gonna say like pretty much exclusively cosmic cyclone yeah <clears throat> quite tough for sure and this will be a big thing here for jeff is they're gonna have to think about how to sequence and prepare for all of the a's and b's which they definitely are extremely talented at so like a uh, pause as uh, we enter main phase one makes me feel like there's not a um uh, pot of extravagance which is uh part of jeff's boomer exodia dark ruler oh. no more is a fantastic hit but if those set cards are like cosmic cyclone it actually doesn't resolve the outstanding problem true dude you're still staring Whoa, down oh god that's terrible Ooh. oh and activating it at a time when chaining something like a cosmic would just be negated by the bore load wow that's awful well 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 what I mean, what, what, do you, what can you possibly do? It'd have to be, like, yeah, Typhoon. Heavy Storm Duster, if you really want to decide that inning, it's Dragon Link, because you're that big of a... <laughs> <laughs> Jeff goes on to Game 3. Hey, there we go. Oh, okay. All right. Now, this is actually where I think mine, Mystic Mind gameplay gets quite interesting, because now you have... The opponent is now prepared for it, so now yeah. you really... This is where a very talented Mystic Mind player like Jeff, where they can show off their knowledge and prepare all the lines of play, which, again, I'm probably hyping it up more than I really should be, yeah. to protect the mine. So, um, yeah, the mine's best uh, game, of course, is game one. If you're playing singles against this deck, you will literally lose, like, 80% of them. Uh, games two and three, your opponent has the option to side out of, like, maybe 15 cards. Like, uh, playing against... Uh, one of my close friends, uh, Gavone, was uh, playing mine at a regional a couple of years ago when it was a potential rogue pick and playing against mine you realistically should be siding out like almost your entire side even if the cards you're going into have very marginal utility just because a lot of the stuff in your deck is just dead and um in games two and three those dead cards aren't going to be clogging revs's hand uh jeff is going to have to fight tooth and nail to resolve literally everything and we'll see if he can we'll see if he can't yeah this is defend the castle protect your mind Yep, Pot of Duality's fantastic. Let's see that final countdown. Ooh, Metaverse is great. Mm -hmm. And Silent Wobby's great too. But the reason that Jeff used to play uh, DD Guide over Silent Wobby is you can't resolve Wobby on the turn that you duality. It's a special summon. Yeah, that would have been amazing, assuming they already have access to the mine. But Pot of Duality is probably one of the fairest cards in the existence of the game. Uh, everyone's spamming the... Uh, we're cool like that easy why uh copy pasta it doesn't really work when jeff leonard goes by jeff leonard on all of his socials i, I think that adds to it. It, it imagine like what would what would jeff leonard's yugi tuber name be like like uh mystic gamer Yu-Gi-Oh type stuff i believe about mystic twitch, i believe their twitch name is lock you down which is very <laughs> appropriate oh that's great that's the metaverse so that is at least one Mystic Mind you have to worry about. I will say there was an interesting pause. Now, of course, on EDO Pro, you do have the option to add a delay, even if you do not have a response. So that way you can 
pseudo mind game your opponent, but assuming that they were holding an Ash Blossom or something like that, who knows? For sure. I mean, uh, whomst in chat has not slammed that always chain to make your opponent think you have Nibiru? Hmm. My favorite is when the people will count in chat. Like, like in the, the opponent will count to you. I remember one guy in particular, I was playing, I think it was World Chalice, and he's just counting. At some point, I got up to like 30, and I was I just gave him the win at that point. I just appreciated his dedication. It's like, I, I really do like what you're doing. Um, I know you don't have <laughs> Nibiru, but I, I do appreciate what you're doing here today. It's just, at a point, he started adding ellipses, where he's just like, oh, man. <laughs> wow, Jeff is really in the tank about this one. All right, Skull really... first. I gotta say, this copy pasta could be so much funnier. Hey, Jeff Leonard. Yeah, Jeff Leonard is Jeff Leonard. I know top players. <laughs> I know top players. That's why I call Jeff Leonard Jeff Leonard. But it's no big deal to me. Uh, you, you can't help yourself from improving a copy pasta. Uh, you know, the waste man's way, shall we say. Speaking of, like, is Jeff Leonard King waste man? No, it's too optimized. Yeah, it's like he's actually quite good at the deck is the problem. Wasteman is like Sacred Beast Crawler Eldritch because you want to hit your Curious Engine to mill specifically your Crawler cards. So that way when you activate Conquistador, you can then activate World Legacy Pawns, shuffling back a Crawler, and then set the Pawns back in the Spell and Trap. Yeah, that is that is pretty much the Wasteman Manifesto. Are we just okay, setting one of But it is a good play. This is the awkward part where if you... There are some awkward hands with mine where if you imagine they have Field Barrier in hand, extremely powerful part of the combo, but you can't use it here since you don't have a mine to put down. All right, looks like uh, Revs is also setting a card. And passing turn! That's Oh, like, wow! That's one way to be mine. So if that set card is Imperial Order, this is actually insane, right? Oh, good point. Man... Are they just that legend to open the one of in a 50 card deck twice? Oh, God. If they Rev... did not draw enough Sarhuja. No, they did not. It could, this is... it could also be like Cosmic. That could be good too. Most likely. All okay, right, they're wrong. going for Mystic wrong. Mind. This is pretty good. Now, you have a backup plan here because we know there's Metaverse. Ooh, okay. that's a good one. This is a bit of a shotgun. Because yeah, if it is a Cosmic Cyclone. Well, I, okay, I'm, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say anything. This is ex especially weak to both Cosmic Cyclone and Imperial Order, which is why I think Jeff would not be doing it if they didn't have a Solemn set. Good, very good point. Extremely good point. And I mean, how do you out this if you're Rev? So you gotta find, you gotta find your Cosmics and you gotta find your Order before Jeff finds the Prohibition. <gasps> Left arm is the set card! Okay. Speaking of counting <laughs> chat, let's go. Wow, wait, they had a lot of access. They discarded two Planet Pathfinder. They played this so slow. Yeah. And again, I mean, hey, big brain. Going to, oh. end, going to end phase, keeping the Prohib in hand. Interesting. So interesting. I, you know, Farfa has a video inside the mind of a Mystic Mind player. You can't be in Jeff's mind. He's... It's 3,000. He's playing chess right now. We're, we're, we're playing Yu-Gi-Oh! He's playing chess. It's like, um, uh, it's like Lovecraftian. It's like, uh, you, <laughs> you glimpse into the mind of Jeff and you come out like a babbling fool. The color out of Jeff. Or similar to seeing a biblical angel where you, uh, yeah. when you see them, you just go blind. Yeah. The, pe the beauty. I guess we're Absolute. getting another mystic mind for some reason. So there wasn't a solemn set. That is interesting. And there was no response. What is this face down card? I can't imagine oh. what the face down card is that it is not Imperial oh, you know and not Cosmic. The worst part here is the fact that we're, we can kind of deduce that Revs is on a hard brick right now. Got a Skull's Oracle. You're, you're not drawing out of it pretty much ever. Yeah. Like the cards in hand have to win the game because nothing Jeff gives you is going to do that. Hmm. Still holding on to Prohib, too. I, I suppose if they're making the same assumption where they know their opponent has nothing and they're being they're able to scald everything to make sure they stay in nothing, so why overcommit? Yeah. Uh Prohib, like if the set if the set card is like evenly matched, oh. then Prohib is really bad. 
Silent Wobby turns off evenly matched for the most part. So now they are free to commit a little harder. God, the driver in hand. I wonder why they kept that in. Oh, playing a Pathfinder, most likely. Yeah. I, again, like, anything with marginal utility is better than, like, monster removal you have. This also turns off Lightning Storm. Yeah, Wobby just does so much for the deck. Yeah. You I have think. to link it off, too. I, or, oh, an Exceed. Okay, is yeah. funny. It's not really good. Is there... I mean... I mean, even if you could activate the Rafflesia, it's not really advancing game state at all. Uh, the no only thing, stuff. yeah, the only thing that Rafflesia is on is Grave Diggers. Um, can you Grave Diggers your own stuff? Because it might be a way to shuffle your deck if Jeff tr summons a monster and get out of the Scald Lock. Interesting. Let's find out. I don't. I I feel like you probably can. Grave Diggers is one of those, or most of the trap hole cards are like that, where. Back in the old days, you could actually win games by, like, banishing your own Stratos so that it will dodge the Venus Chain and resolve so you can add a Bubble Man or something like that. Yeah, I understand, chat, that Wrath has to be able Man, to I'm activate. Sold. Anyway, I'm when your opponent in a... activates a monster effect. Ah, dang. I'm saying in a world where, like, Jeff normal summons Planet Pathfinder and then continues a combo. Going for Wobby hmm. here. Drew a couple of cards off the Extravagance, one of which was the Wobby. We're going to Skulled. At this point, you're, you're just looking for your win con, whether that be Countdown or Cauldron. Uh, one of the most frustrating parts about Wobby is that it's not an activated effect. It just hard changes the limit of your hand to three. It doesn't say something like, colon, discard down to three. It's just like, no, you just, it's just continuous. Enjoy Mystic Mind, buddy. And yeah, that's, that's... Why, that's why you play it, even though it's got a Nambo for uh, uh, Pot of Duality. Yeah, I, the fact that, because it's... It, that is just such an incredible part. That was an inherent special summons as all the judges in chat will yell at me now, but activate mine, put that on the board, and now your opponent cannot respond. They can't do anything. If they don't out the lobby, they have to play with half of the normal hand size. Revs is just uh, firing off at everything here. Uh, just, yeah. I think, uh, trying to break the skull block. This does do it, but unfortunately... Uh, uh, it doesn't do it enough. It does get the Silent Wobby off the field, so there's enough cards in hand, but uh, without an additional native way to draw, they're still stuck under this idiotic card that lets you lantern the top of your opponent's deck. I wonder... I, I have to ask, I just wonder... I suppose the reasoning to hold things like Prohibitions, you want the extra space, you're, you're yeah. selling... Oh, wow, three trappings. You're telling your opponent, like, I don't, re you're pretty much saying, I don't need anything here to win, so I might as well just wait until I find the be the better cards, which they've gone through half their deck and they have not seemed to find one. So, like, uh, the way that Jeff loses this game is if uh, Final Countdown is in the bottom 10, uh, obviously this is the first one, mm -hmm. um, or he accidentally locks himself out of the Spell and Trap card zone by setting too many things, I think you want to keep the space that is not reserved specifically for Final Countdown. Like, it has to be a Solemn. Because if you prohib the wrong thing blind, you could really screw yourself up. Absolutely. I, there is a world where Final Countdown and three Cauldron are in the bottom of your deck. Uh, so, okay, I guess I can go ahead and reveal it. Uh, Jeff is not playing Cauldron. No kidding. Is uh, it only Final Countdown? I, uh, at least not in the main. I guess I can check real quick. Hmm. Interesting thing here, though, is if they draw into Left Arm Offering, which we know is one of the more potent cards in this deck, they would now have to banish six cards out of their hand. Uh, Jeff does that all the time, for what it's worth. <laughs> He's just like, <laughs> oh, I absolutely will. It's, it, you play, he plays this just very, like, oh, what is the word, cosmic sort of game, and then you just go, Left Arm Banish six for cost, and just, oh, just uh, throws it to the wind. Yeah, it's um, it's one cauldron in the board, zero in the main. All right, we're going for a prohib, which tells me that he's got something. I'm gonna prohib the cosmic Probably. here. This and is where you would want to activate the left arm. Oh, it does resolve. Wow, that's frustrating. Going to end huh? phase. Oh, just keeping the hand size, I suppose. This is interesting. If you don't find Final Countdown or your three copies of Arm in the next, so we've used the cards. we've used the one Arm, correct? 
There's one arm. Yes, we searched prohibition early on about yeah. turn three. We're on turn. When's the last time you saw a turn nineteen in a game that wasn't of NJ Yu Gi Oh? That form is awful, by the way. I'm changed, but. I don't. I think we've run out of things to talk about in this match. <laughs> no, I, I'm just kind of on the edge of my seat waiting for Jeff to find a way to get to Final Countdown because, like, that's the last piece to this puzzle. There is this incredible amount of tension of just, what if they don't see it? Yeah, right? I mean, realistically, it's very unlikely the bottom ten cards are, like, triple left arm uh, Final Countdown. But it's also possible, right? They've also seen almost all their consistency. There's three extravagance and one duality. So in terms of your quote-unquote search card, you're down to three. Mm -hmm. Two more left arm and a pot of duality. Yeah. Have we activated two pots? Jesus. Three? No, we've only done one. So it's okay. two duality as well. Like, oh, okay. Yep. It, it, would, it would be a, an unbelievable whiff if all of those were in the bottom ten. But again, is possible. Cool. I mean, mathematically, yes. Realistically, no. Mathematically, yes. And, you know, that's all that matters is those... Sometimes the Matrix glitches, and, you know... All right, come on. Ugh, going for Goddess Skulls every turn. Uh, whatever they're scalding, it's it's really it's really something. Let me see if Jeff is on, like, Jar of Avarice or something. Just oh, completely imagine. disgusting like that. I'm trying to think of, like... What are the odds at this point? If you're looking for specifically five cards, there's 15 left, so you're already looking at about a 30 or, what, a 29 point some odd percent chance of seeing it within your next card. Yeah, the next card at this point has, like, a 30 of getting uh, yeah. one of the things you need. All right, Chad, new game. Take your bets on when the game will end on the turn counter. What turn, odd or even? Or just, you know, over, under, specifically... Oh, we could actually, really get that going. I'm going to write Otter even. Competitive, competitive uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! time turn gambling. All right. Somebody's uh, playing Alapiscu FTK and you just get completely baited because you think it's a true FTK when it's actually a turn two pseudo FTK. Oh, just absolutely foolish. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Seen a lot of odd early. Interesting. Will the game end on an odd or an even turn? You have to, you have now, to figure it out. I think Chad is actually quite smart here because, well, let's think. The, the 20th turn will be at the end of Rev's turn. So any of you guys who voted early, you now have to play that map, which I don't feel like doing. So. Uh, I also, this is getting so scary. We're down to 14 and still haven't seen it. I also did turn on bit voting for this one, even though voting does literally nothing. Interesting. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Uh, discarding. Oh God, these these draws are so bad. I I just I don't know. Chaos space is a way to get out of the scald lock. You got to find a way to banish cards from your graveyard. So like a Levianir would go a long way here. I wonder if maybe do they have something? Because now they've shuffled. Do they have something that can allow them to draw cards? A yeah, chaos space. Card? Ah, yes. Uh, but they have so, to. Yeah, get... you are correct. You are one hundred percent right. They have to get a card that can't be normal or specialed into the banished zone. We do have a Halka Fibrax, but of course you can't banish that for Levianir. It it might be worth like going through okay. a minimum of a Dragon Link combo, uh, and getting some idiots into the grave so that you can banish them for Lev and then draw off of Chaos Space, trying to find pretty much exactly Imperial Order. That is about all. But then again, I, th that one face down, it cannot be anything other than Solemn Judgment. Oh yeah, we should just hover Prohibition. This is the only card that has text on it. Yeah, so again, Rev's going through a very small portion of the combo so they can get a striker into the graveyard, banish it for Lev, and then shuffle it back to draw a card with Chaos Space. I mean, that's really yeah. as good as it's going to get, I think. At this point, what do you draw, though? You're, you can't play Cosmic Cyclone? Yeah, you're like... You it has to be an Imperial uh, Order. order. So it'd have yeah. to be Imperial Order. If you draw Imperial Order from your 27-card deck before Jeff draws one of his nine ways to find his out, I would be very mad. What if, what if, he's just, what if Jeff is just holding it for 11 cards left in deck? Oh, Rev says, interesting. Hmm. 
Hmm. It's just twin twisters. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the, the super spice. Interesting, Pastor. Oh, well, the, the truest combo. Okay, Jeff, we are three cards away. We This is actually going to be a problem very shortly. My heart is beating here. Like, because I, I, I just can't... It's just so unfathomable that this would happen. Yeah. It, it, would, it would be a, a mathematical, just unbelievable uh, occurrence. It, the Boltzmann brain of uh, Mystic Mind. Ooh. Somebody in chat mentioned a card. What if there's a red reboot down here? Uh, if there's a red reboot down here, I, I don't know what you think it's going to do. I don't think any trap cards are going to be activated over the course of this game. I was thinking if they somehow topped into Imperial Order, and then at some point through the Skull Block, Jeff gave them the uh, Red Reboot, which I can't imagine they would, but... Ah, here we go. Now I have some good news we can talk about. Rykate, defending champion, has defeated Water and will be your one of your grand finalists. Oh, damn. Really? That, that rocks. <laughs> I love Megalith. I would love to cast another game of Megalith. I that rocks. I he he didn't drown in the semifinals, you know. Do you have more puns? Can you give me like four I, or five I can't. more? I literally cannot. It it will kill me. Jeff, Jeff, where the fuck is Jeff? No way! It just can't happen. It just can't. Okay, hold on. I right, wait, wait. What did we? Uh, there's five, right? Five. Because you have two left arm, two pot, and you have your your actual copy of Final Countdown. Yes, and at this point, pot of no duality, point. finding not a card that wins you the game would be insane. But in, in one turn, only this next draw can be pot of duality. From that point on, adding the card to your hand will deck you out before final countdown resolves, right? Oh no, you're right. He cited final countdown out. I don't think that's true, Chet. <laughs> I would see, I would think that that would not happen. Out of nowhere, he just activates three trick star Oh right? god, oh hey! Jesus Christ. <sighs> All right, chat. RN Jesus. Come on now. Good luck, Good says luck. Revs. <laughs> this is it. This is the game. <gasps> oh, wait, he hit left. Oh, he got it. Got oh, it. Got it. it. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, that was horrifying. <laughs> wow. Wait, no. Oh. No, because it has it from your deck to your hand. No, you're right. Oh, my God. Holy it's over. shit. It wait. actually, it, math, math has failed. Oh, my God. It was one turn too late. Oh wow! Am I just as am I one off? Oh no! No way! I yeah, I, nine turns, right? Wait, does it count? Okay, I'm let's trying, let's see that hand. Turn one, it's turn all two. garbage. The hand is all garbage. Wait, there was another pot of duality in that hand. You just didn't activate the duality. What? I guess, I guess that makes sense. Okay. Crazy. One, two, three, four. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that is time in the round. Congrats to Revsky. So it's it's one. Okay. So this two, is one, seven. right? This is turn one. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I think he's actually going to straight. Uh, is it? Is it? Per it's either perfect or one off. Both yeah. are insane. Type. <laughs> oh God. Skull got a skull to Oracle. What, that that card is just the hardest carry right now. Yeah. I can't I can't fathom how hard this card is carrying. No, I I haven't. I'm not exactly sure on the math, but I think that Jeff is exactly fine. No way. I think twenty is going to be Revs' be... turn, and he'll win in between the turns before he draws. He will win in between the phase where he would lose. This is some anime stuff. I'm pretty for sure. Turns. I but think I'm... you're right. I think you're right. Oh my! God. I can't fact check you because I am just my brain is fried. Oh but... my god! Chad, why aren't we counting? Yeah, Chad, you have to count along. We we're not going to be know. able to keep this it, it ourselves. So you've got we're, this seven, already seven, been so tense. The anime would make eight. this 500 episodes. Yeah, you. Yugi just on Mystic Mind, Biden, not a combo player in yeah, sight. Because look, so he was on he was on nine cards in deck when he activated Final Countdown, right? Because mm -hmm. when he passes turn, this is going to be nine. When he passes back, it's going to be ten. He'll draw for turn, and then we have ten phases before he dies. I think. Uh, 
I'm not sure. I, I, I man, my brain doesn't work. All, all I, all I know is, I got it two zero or two one. That's all my brain is right now. Okay, so does it, the other question is: Are there still uh, solemns in Jeff's deck? Because like, Imperial Order would not out this, but you know, you probably could facilitate an OTK. There shouldn't be. Two of them got banished off of the the left arm offering. So there's probably so one this, more. This is the one fa the card face down is probably the only remaining copy of Solemn Judgment. Although they have been very unlucky. But I yeah, I think they did get thirteen. Right. This would be fourteen. Fifteen Jesus with Christ. two cards. Sixteen. Three hundred and seventy eight people watching this nonsense. <laughs> okay, uh okay. Turn 51 we're on. Oh, these scalds. This is also the point in the game where you can accidentally scald for 3Vs. Like, if your opponent's on triple twin twister, <laughs> you like, oh god, oh no. We're about to get to that, that X, the, yeah, it's the, that part too, where Jeff just <laughs> slyly flashes the camera. Look at this. Check this out. All right, the other, it looks like probably the other, either Cursed Seal or uh, Solemn Judgment going down here, playing around the Imperial Order or the uh, the Twin Twisters that maybe are in the sideboard. Uh, 16, we've got eight. two left. 17. 17, 18. 18. Yeah, it will yeah. be. It will wow. be. It's bang on. Wow, what a way to end it. Ah, uh, I'm losing it. All right. Incredible. Jeff, you've got two Skulls Oracles left. Your opponent has Sinatra into a three of that beats you. Uh, or if they do, you've got to have enough negation set. I wow, who says Mystic Mind isn't hype? This is the <laughs> oh my god, and that's wow. it! Last wow. card, last card! Unbelievable. Okay, so scalding one last time. I'm gonna make sure whatever the last one is, it's not good enough. Anti spell fragrance. The board from Revs didn't find it in the oh. opener. Quick oh. launch as well. Oh, God. Uh, actually, this is pretty bad. You could potentially uh, quick launch in order to uh, shuffle your deck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good point. Not that I think yeah. it really matters at this point. Problem is, is now the anti spells face up, so if you try into something... It's, yeah. If you, you, can't, you can't cosmic, right? All right, let's see it. Let's see it. You have, you, have it. you have to end turn. You have to let it go three. Wow. Yeah. Jeff Leonard in finals. Let's see it. Let's see it. Pass that turn, Revs. Revs, <laughs> pass the turn, buddy. We want to see it. Can he win by state-based action in the 56. middle of turn? Who oh. guessed even? Who guessed even? Oh, my God. <laughs> what a disaster. Okay. Let's go! Oh my god. That was... You know, only Jeff can make me actually enjoy Mystic Mind gameplay. That was Ooh. unbelievable. The very last turn. Folks, with that, we have your two finalists. They are Jeff Leonard in his first Quarantine Series final versus the defending champion, Rycape, playing Megalith. Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, and I am back with the finals of the 8th Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine Series. Folks, it's been a long, dusty road to get to this point. We have had 7 rounds of contention, followed by 4 rounds of top cut. Uh, there have been a lot of casualties along the way, and also a lot of people who did not understand the Edo Pro interface, and as a result, lost. Um... The, uh, I, I am happy to report, uh, that the, uh, the following people, um, I owe a solemn rendition of their name in accordance with the, uh, the top cut, um, stipulations. Let me just search Yu-Gi-Oh! Sad Music. All right, and we'll go, oh, Bond of Friendship, this will go. All right, here we go. very loud actually today we remember the fallen Gil on mech knight revs cards on rocket tortov on water cyber vx on ad emancipator depressionist playing rocket smoke grenade god that deck sucks mgmfa on numeron eldlich jp madman on infernoble knight 
Dive Missile on Sacred Beast Eldlich. Yukie on Magical Musketeer Dogmatica. Angel Ferox on Sky Striker. Your Cheese on Numeron Generator. Stevie Blunder on Yep Double. The Yugi Man on Buster Blader Liss Buster Blader Rocket. And Ginger on Plunder Patrol. All of them have been washed away before we get to our final round in which Jeff Leonard playing Mystic Mine will play against Rycape playing Megalith. I am joined for the fourth round in a row by Mambo Yu-Gi-Oh. How are you doing today? I am doing very well. Great. I am so ready. <laughs> that last match was, it was something. And I... I'm happy to report as well, TG is the winner of the uh, Quarantine Series 8 archetype poll. And for that reason, uh, let's get some Chibi Gohans in chat. Uh, a very heartfelt shout out to <laughs> Chibi Gohan. What one card will save TG? We'll never know. For real. I, I nothing. I if, if Trident Launcher couldn't do it, I, I don't know what will. That's such a good point. I gotta say real quick, as a little uh, tidbit before we get started here. I DM Jeff, and I say, I think that beats revealing the three Twin Twisters, and he just goes, it does! <laughs> he sent me, he sent me a message, and he was like, I wasn't actually sure. I hadn't counted it out, but I was pretty sure I could do it with nine. I was like, That's yeah. so funny. He tells me, that's actually come up before. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, it's come <laughs> up before. Oh, God. All right. Uh, I have let them know we are prepared. And chat, all 385 of you, I hope you are ready to watch a Mystic Mind final. Oh, so, God. Oh, the this... one, seven, 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 seven. Thank you for the quadrillion bits just now. Uh, 40, 40, 44. I gotta say, this is such an interesting match for a lot of reasons. A, Jeff Leiter could just win the tournament. Yeah. Two, Ryan Cape could repeat champion. Yep. And if he doesn't win, that means Megalith got twice, or uh, second, at both of the big tournaments this weekend. Yeah, for those of you who are watching this Monday when it's going up, uh, this weekend at the Luxury Championship Series, uh, Rykapes, uh, I think they're, they know each other, uh, friend Lundredy, uh got second with Megalith. And um, for those of you who watched my video on it over the weekend, the list I played was handed to me by Rykape. So uh, if anyone knows how to play this unbelievable deck, it's going to be this guy. And it looks like they've won the die roll. That is catastrophic for his Jeff. Definitely not preferable because we've seen what this Megalith can do where it ends on the Calamities. But not the Calamities you would think. <gasps> right? And oh. Dimension Shifter out the hand. Jeff came prepared. He said, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, God. You think you think you're gonna win this here? Absolutely not. Hit me with the dimension shifter. Can Megalith actually play through this interaction? No, because like because we actually saw this a little bit earlier where there was a Herald of Arc Light on the board, and we discovered that the Megaliths, to use their effect ritual summon where they discard from hand, is cost and it specifies graveyard. So if I'm not mistaken, you can't activate those megalith effects in hand. So the Megalith effects in hand aren't necessarily that important, but hmm. what is going to be important is this hand isn't going to be able to make block dragon combos. Like the block dragon won't go to the Ooh. graveyard, it won't float. As a result, like, what do you end on? A Baythor tops? Baythor activates in a new chain because you're summoning it on your opponent's turn, and if that's the case, boy does Mystic Mind beat that setup. I, this is, I, I don't know the Megalith deck enough, but it's, so this is tough. And I mean, Rykave started out by saying, this is going to be crusty. And then was immediately hit with Dimension Shifter and went, ah, even worse. <laughs> just, just miserable. Yeah, chat, chat, talking about Unformed. Unformed doesn't work the way you want. I mean, even if it summons a Baythor from deck, I, what's going to happen? There's no rituals in the graveyard. You'll have to send rituals, and Baythor activates on a new chain. If Jeff just lays down a Mystic Mine, I feel like the the game is his. And do you think they have any outs in this Megalith? Because we, because you said your list in particular was 60 cards. Rykate, and I believe Lundredy has shrunk this down to 40 and has loaded it with hand traps and hand traps are very bad against mystic mind yeah i mean uh i i don't remember there weren't cosmics in the list that uh Rycape gave me uh it was very geared toward monster effect negation uh with things like guardian i god this is really rough 
we talked about this in the previous match where where Jeff shines, particularly with this deck, is he has an incredible amount of game knowledge. So I, I wonder if he knows a lot about the Megaliths. Now, I'm sure Jason has probably worked with him on that, at least to some extent. Is He usually says he relies on Jason to break down the block on these combo decks. <laughs> Uh, and for what it's worth, I mean, Jason is out of the tournament. Uh, also made top 16, but I believe dropped in uh, as soon as Top Cut started. So likely is able to feed Jeff Leonard information about uh, the combo decks lurking in the format and how to effectively play around them. I like opening with Scald. I, it, this is just another fascinating tidbit of Jeff's play style of, I'm going to get all the information I possibly can before I commit to the play that wins the game. I don't want to say Which, anything, but no. it feels like a Magic the Gathering type play. Like, yeah, I'm not going to mm -hmm. commit to my win con until I know everything. We're going for Prohibition here. I wonder what the call is. YCS MTG when? <laughs> Never. Oh, God. <laughs> what, am I going to stream on Cockatrice? No, thank you. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, they don't have, like, anything, open source or not. Uh, they have Cockatrice, but it looks like ass. It'd be like, imagine if Dueling Nexus was the only mechanism that you oh. had. Stop talking. Anyway, there's Left Arm. Going for Baythor here. That's the only way they're going to be able to pop the card that they are setting next. Oh, God. Left Arm for Mystic Mine. You got it, oh, buddy. Oh, man. On resolution. And a surrender oh. for Rycake! Here we go. Oh no, Jeff is one game away from winning YCS number eight. I, I can't believe this. Is is Megalith going to make it to finals twice only to choke both times? I will say, no matter what, this will not be the last we see of Megalith at big events. Oh, no way. Absolutely this not. This deck is incredible. I, I Dimension Shifter. I, I know Jeff loves that card, and man, that's... It carried. Oh, absolutely. All right, chat, we're putting up the poll. Who's winning this match? Put your hands up. Give your favorite player your energy. This is... I, I just love this so much. Me Megalith is the deck that I wanted to see in finals. Uh, but for it to be in finals against Jeff Leonard, who has made top cut two or three times in these events, and then immediately lost... <laughs> oh, it's really fantastic. Every single event I've helped out with of uh, these YCSs, Jeff has made top cut and then lost in 10 minutes. So this is great. And kind of on the same point, it's Megalith is the deck you wanted to see win finals, but at the same time, for me, Jeff is the person I wanted to see win finals. If we could get Jeff to play Megalith, I mean, you know, that, that would be fantastic. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I once suggested to Jeff, as mostly a joke, I said... You know, it could be fun. You could play uh, Peeps YGO, another uh, content creator, uh, arguably on Rev's level of attractive, about his favorite format being hat format, and said, what if you, uh, you know, you play Peeps in hat format? And he immediately, no, absolutely not. That, that won't happen. <laughs> oh, God. All right, Rykape going first once again, unsurprising. Um, going to get the Fool to hand, and oh my god, using Prep Rites to get Fool telegraphs you. Yup, already have the Incantation Chalice Slime, and intend to use it for its purpose. Uh, not responding to the Chalice Slime with a Dimension Shifter makes me feel like either they don't have it, or they're waiting for a monster to be on field so that Gamma's offline. Oh, and that's what they're doing! Smart. Oh my god! Of genius. The hard read! The hard read! Jeff Leonard! He's oh so my good! God. How did he do that? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> is, is it over? It's just over? That's the end of the turn! <laughs> He's... Oh no! Well, okay, okay, okay. But again, the games in which Mystic Mine is at its best is game one. Games two and three, it becomes much harder to win with this deck. Even though we made Rykape pass, Jeff has no sort of offensive pressure. If Rykape has Cosmic Cyclones in the hand, it gets really hard for Jeff regardless. Oh, God. All right, so drawing a couple of cards here off of the extravagance, I mean... Oh, what 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 could you possibly get that would that would insulate against something like a couple of cosmic cyclones? 
I, I suppose, like, the best case scenario for Jeff right here is going to be able, like, the ability to slam a Mystic Mine, obviously, is, is paramount. But after that, you want to be able to back it up with stuff like uh, Solemn Judgments. You want to be able to pack it up with stuff like Curse Seal of the Forbidden Spell, which we know that he's on. Uh, oh, man, this is rough. Alright, Rykape's turn once again. Unfortunately, Mambo's PC has crashed. The hype was simply too much for him. Alright, Mambo, have you returned? I will give this a shot. Now, my PC has crashed. Guide me through this. Alright, so, I yeah, this, this is going to be pretty difficult because uh, I do know that you need a significant amount of uh, knowledge in order to ascertain what's going on here. Uh, Jeff has set to and passed back. From this position, uh, Rykape is going to activate Incantation Inception, which he searched last turn with Candle, sending the Candle to the graveyard to go for a Megalith. Uh, ideally, you know, I would expect one of those two back rows is like a Metaverse or uh, more likely a... Um... Oh god, I don't even know the name of the card. The Quick Play spell that sets Mystic Mind. Demise of the Land. Yes. Yeah, the, the Mind deck... Demise of the Land, I think, is another one of those key texts that nobody really expected that I think I think Jeff actually pioneered pretty much with every other tech card in the deck of being able to just quickly put a mine down and making it nigh un impossible to respond to since that card activates directly. You can't ash it or anything. Yeah, see, the problem was that... Um... Uh, the problem was that the... Uh way people were conceptualizing of uh, Demise of the Land was that it was a bad terraforming, right? Um, but in reality, mm -hmm. it's much better specifically in this deck uh, because it can, on special summon, uh, activate the card that stops any effects, right? Like, just the ability to uh, activate it immediately and the effect not be, like, missed timing or some kind of nonsense that was preventing it from seeing play in, like, sub-terror. I mean, it, it, it was just a very specific type of card uh i think right cape has the right idea here asking keck wait where's the mine uh we have yet to see the mine come down and if there is no mine then jeff is very dead this is sort of the tension of the play especially when you're if you ever sat down and played against a mystic mind deck and they just don't seem to have it there's still that thought in the back of your head of, of like what if and then you'll, like, normal summon something like a Manju, and then you'll just swing in thinking, maybe they just don't have it. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe they just don't have it, though. Then you have to... Risk management, very important skill to learn in Yu-Gi-Oh. All right, so we're going to go for the Fool here, and, I mean, this is full combo if it's allowed to resolve... We'll send this Baythor to the graveyard to get a Baythor from deck. Uh, Red Cape says, you better have it right now. I, I want to see what you aim to do. Oh, is the Baythor resolving? Infip targeting the Baythor. What Oof. is that last set card? I'm losing my mind. Uh, Jeff, like we've... I've, I've really been hammering the point home, but I just got to say it again. Jeff, as... A thinking man is just an enigma. It's impossible to predict what they have and how ah. they're going to use it. Well, that explains it. It was solemn judgment. Uh, so cutting off access mm. to Block Dragon by preventing the uh, the uh, activation of the Gallant Granite. Uh, we're going to use Incantation Inception here, sending this oh, sending this Chalice Slime to the graveyard to summon a Talismandra. The Talismandra, of course, can get just about anything. And Jeff's only at 4,000 life points. I think this is likely going to be the end of the line for him. Uh, all that uh, Rykape's got to do is, I think they're on a Fey Leg, so they could get that. So again, unfortunately, I am blind. Is there just nothing on Jeff's field at this point? Yeah, Jeff's uh, completely wiped. Ah, uh, oh, man. I. Yeah, there it is. Fey Leg to hand uh, means that it's going to be an OTK... I think we can switch Fool to attack position. And the only thing left to manage, of course, is that infinite impermanence column, which Rykape was like, yeah, we're not we're not messing that up. Getting the Hageth onto the field, uh, that's fantastic news. Uh, now we can have monsters for the Phaleg. Th this is going to be it. We are likely going to see a move to game three unless Jeff has a very specific couple of hand traps. I guess Numeron, Numeron Wall would end the battle phase. 
That'd be a crazy tech, though. Newer on <laughs> At that point, you no might as well play Swift Scarecrow. Network, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Swift Scarecrow would fare better in a mine deck because you don't want to put anything on board. Uh huh. I'm I'm going to the quarantine series here to see if I can very specifically find what Jeff Leonard is playing and what might be lurking in the uh, side deck. And nothing is really standing out to me that would help him in this scenario. Yeah, going into game three, though, I would say it, a game three, like we saw with Revs cards, is the most interesting game of a mine. Oh yeah. Of a mine match because, especially when the Mystic Mine player is going first, because that's where you get to <clears> see <throat> all of the mine games that the best Mystic Mine player in the world is going to play. And really, I say that, but it does just come down to: Do you have it or do you not, Ry Cape? And then, do you have it or do you not, Jeff Leonard? So this is frustrating. Uh, even though they've been able to cut uh, their opponent off of Gallant Granite. Uh, we can use the <laughs> the Union Carrier to um to go for uh, a block dragon from deck, only to be met with another infinite impermanence. And unfortunately, I believe <laughs> that Union Carrier's uh, link summoning stipulation is a condition, and as a result, I mean, this is really all you can end on. Oh, okay. I so... mean, if, if you're not dead here, there's about a million cards in your deck that actively win you the game. About to say, how many cards do they have in hand right now? All right, Feyleg and attack, and oh, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> oh. uh, there's just enough rituals in the graveyard. I mean, this is why you play one mm. at least copy of Feyleg. It, it gets so big so quickly. And in these games where you kind of establish parity, um, but passing back to your opponent is potentially a death sentence, it's just a fantastic way to go over the top. All right, it is now time. For the moment of truth, the third game in finals. Let's see if we can... can this is what, I, th I think this is what you want to see. You know, this is... Are we going to see a repeat champion, or are we going to see a new one? So it looks like we're likely going to have a tie. So uh, if, if Rikate hmm. wins, not RJTJ is going to win the prediction bracket. Uh, if Jeff wins, it's going to be Ginger5642, who walks with it. Hmm. Interesting. Truly the prize that everyone really is gunning for at the end of the day. Yeah, Fantasy Top 16. So it's time for that all-important Game 3. Rykape says, please, Brick. Oh, do not doubt Jeff's ability to draw Boomer Exodia. <laughs> Boomer Exodia. That's usually what chat will call me when I'm streaming. Oh, God, there it is. Planet Pathfinder. Okay, so we have the Mystic Mine. Yes. Now we need the Silent Wobby. We are we are one of the four pieces of of the, the true example. There it is! There it is, baby! Let's go! Oh, it's Two, out. two it's out of four. <laughs> Come on, let's go! Yes! Oh, we are, we are literally one solemn judgment away from Boom, Boomer Exodia. What if they also drew Dimension Shifter? It's oh, yeah. actually just the God Hand. They, it was just meant yes. to be. Set to pass. Is Jeff going to oh, walk with wow. it? Rykip says, I literally don't have it out. <laughs> oh. Should I scoop or do you want content? Rykip, I've been streaming for 10 hours. <laughs> Any time you can save me is extremely valuable. <laughs> It, oh no. my god. We, no way do, are they going to scoop. Do they, we live in the world? No, they've got to be able to play it out. There's got to be something in the deck. It's game three. Yeah, there's no way you didn't side in Cosmic's Lightning Storm. Evenly something. Well, I mean, good luck Lightning Storming with the Wabi on field, and good luck keeping that five-card oh, hand. Oh, god. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, I mean, everything in Megalith is an activated effect. It, you're complete... You're just... It's, it's over. <laughs> so, uh, Matt is correct. Um, there are cards in Rykape's sideboard that potentially do things, like Evenly, for example, uh, but they're very specific. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a very certain series of plays has to happen for this to work. I It's similar to what we saw with the last match between Jeff and Revs, where they've managed to get backed into a corner, or, well, better better said is Jeff backed them into a corner where they had to draw like they had to like shuffle the deck and then draw Imperial Order off of some obscure not really obscure but off of Chaos Space by forcing the 
materials, and it's just it's so unlikely. Uh, it's like it's like in Magic: The Gathering, where like if you're playing against Lantern oh. Control, the way to out Lantern Control is to like save a fetch and have more fetches than they have Lantern effects uh, at instant speed, and then draw like jesus um but you can't concede because there is the potentiality that that happens right like just like revs could have won the game if that uh left arm offering was one card deeper you know you can't just concede in these scenarios it feels so bad uh rykape unfortunately I... is is one card below jeff and as a result will just straight up lose to deck Ooh. out it the yeah and that's even worse because mine is putting the onus on Rykape. The Jeff doesn't he can literally not do anything he and it, we will win in 60 turns. If it's if the set back row is like double solemn, that's it. There's literally oh, nothing yeah. Rykape can do. You're you're even on more of a counter if you hit God of Skulls Oracle, you're not drawing out of it. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I I'm seeing the Mystic Mind 10 minute testing just blossom before my eyes there's a zero percent chance that jeff asks for anything else <laughs> oh god uh, what if what if jeff just gave you like i'm trying to think of like what, what one of his other favorite decks of all time is it's pretty much stun which jason made you do hmm. and then it's mine so yeah <laughs> uh so rykape says it's 4 a.m and i want to go to sleep they're firing off the evenly matched. Uh, as we expected, there are cards like that in the deck. The dark bribe, the response from Jeff. He says, I don't want to lose any of this. My board is crazy. And Rykape surrenders. Jeff Leonard is the eighth Yu-Gi-Oh! Quarantine Series champion. What a... What a disaster. Oh my god. Dropped zero matches. Zero matches all day. Completely undefeated. Undefeated in Swiss. Undefeated in Top Cut. This man literally, literally, has won the entire tournament without dropping a single set. I mean, this is a this was a high powered uh, YCS. We were talking about it beforehand. This was the spikiest it has ever been. And honestly, the more meta people are playing, the better anti-meta becomes. Mm -hmm.